Oh yeah, shit. I was supposed to host you. Cheers. Okay. Oh, thanks, Anya. Wait, wait, wait. Give oh, me yeah. one, one minute. Don't do it, Tarky. Listen, Tarky, we need a smoother intro, okay? I mean, look, my the intro... whole thing. Oh, no. Look, no, 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 no. Shh. My intro was so smooth. I hadn't even said a single word, and he already knew I was about to start the show. Properly. No, that that's fine. But whenever you go, blah 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 blah, welcome to the show, and then you go, you tell me what you've been doing. <laughs> that shit doesn't work, man. It's like we've been doing this for a while, but that just doesn't work. Every time the person's just like. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I've been, you know, <laughs> chillaxing and, and stuff, and sh it just doesn't work. We need to transition into this better, man. So, so right, so how do you recommend we start today's episode, then? What did you say? H how do you recommend we start today's episode, then? Listen, the regular start is fine. I'm just saying we gotta flow more smoothly into the what people have been doing. I don't know how. Listen, I just critique, okay? I don't give any <laughs> constructive criticism. I'm okay. just saying. Okay. No, no, that, that's fair. That's fair. I'll take that on board. Okay. And on that, uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to episode number 25 of Bay Class. Today we're joined by Wolfio, Engineering Eternity, and Rise QT. Rise, what have you been up to? I don't care. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> Listen, I've been, I I could make this as awkward as possible, but I'll leave it at that. Okay. Uh, yeah, there was a league start race, and I did that. That was really fun. And now I'm like re-rolling different builds and testing old builds, and mainly playing Ignite. You ever felt like you were stuck in like a particular class for an entire league for like no particular reason? I only played Dead Eye last league. And now I'm only playing Elementalist. But while I'm only playing Elementalist, I keep telling people that Elemental is absolute dog shit for Ignite and everything I've been playing is Ignite. But like <laughs> Impulsa makes it all work. So it's like, oh, <laughs> crap. But yeah, mostly Explosive Arrow lately. Really good. Explosive Arrow, really nice. Also, Diet and Dawn apparently works with Explosive Arrow, even though it never did. But GG says it works now. And it's interesting because that would mean that it's either now bugged, but their explanation was actually really good for it, and it makes sense, or it's been bugged the whole time before that, and somehow the elemental damage with attack skills change and ignite changes changed it. Wait, wait, but why why wouldn't it work? Because in the past, explosive arrow explosions were never considered a attack or a spell, so you couldn't scale it with remotely but, but anything wait, like that but elemental damage with attacks does scale uh, explosive auto now it does but that's yeah. that used to look differently that's that used to be it was with weapons specifically, right yeah, yeah it was yeah. specifically ah. with weapons so i guess somehow it definitely hasn't it worked changed. before and now it does it so... was changed along with the elemental damage of attacks yeah yeah probably Change. somehow i mean that's a positive i'm not complaining it really makes explosive arrow significantly stronger so nice yeah as far as i'm aware that's worked ever since the 3.0 beta because i remember trying a burning arrow build in the 3.0 beta and was like wow ignite shit i hope they, they buff this one day uh, but yeah speaking I mean, of that, that makes yeah. sense though because that's an actual attack yeah but the fact that the whole like so i'm not sure how you guys feel about this because i know we're going to be talking about ignite later but it's really difficult to explain how Ignite works now. Is that just me? Like, if you struggle with that rise, and people are like, oh, why don't you get spell damage in your build? And you're yeah. like, uh... I'm making a guide for the Fireball character I'm playing right now, and I'm trying to explain in the beginning what stats you don't want to get and what you do want to get and how you don't want to overinvest into certain things. It's like you got to skip a bunch of nodes in the tree. Like, it's like, why wouldn't you get that node there? Like, it it's tough because it's so different. Like, for instance, the other day we ran into a problem that I had to converse with carve about which was if you have oh i guess i wonder if you guys are going to know the answer to this so let's say you have elemental equilibrium right and you hit a mob with this elemental equilibrium so that it's debuffed and now you ignite that mob and as that mob is dying to the ignite there's a big prolif and now a beyond mob spawns next to it and it's affected by that proliferation does that mob take extra damage from the initial bigger ignite? Uh, oh. 
I, I think it takes I think it would take the whatever the initial ignite the other one one got it would use that base damage but I think it would use the resistances of the monster separately so I think its ignite would be I think it would be higher unless it's it's calculated after that see so when you hit the first one you'd reduce its um, or you'd increase its resistances because you have elemental equilibrium and then the other one would have regular resistances. So I think it would use whatever the base of the initial ignite is, but it would be a higher burn because its resistances are normal rather than being buffed. But I could be wrong on that because I don't know what their chain of calculations. Oh is. no, then you're you're right. <laughs> but it's you like did like it, it reverse. It, like, it double dips, kind of. I would assume it would kind no, of. No, it like doesn't. No, oh, it doesn't okay. double dip. It just it just because the other run's resistances didn't go up because you didn't hit it with the the fire the prolif would be spreading the initial base. Yeah, he like took the other way, because most people assume that, well, yeah, the initial mob had less resistances, so the other mob would take more, or wouldn't wouldn't be affected because its resistances aren't lower and it's always yeah. base damage. But he took the opposite thing of the mob not getting buffed. <laughs> so, yeah, but he, he's right. Basically, nothing changes, which is, yeah, weird <laughs> to me, because that's how ignite used to work right like you would essentially yeah it would it would like yeah because you do the initial hit with with the uh and you'd check against the resistances you drop them and then when it applied the ignite it would check against the resistance drop again so you just like double your damage yeah. by by um going through resistances it was dumb exactly yeah. so i mean a lot of new stuff and yeah ignites are really cool but kind of difficult to explain it's like especially if you get into things like uh deadly ailments it's like Wait, so you want me to deal less damage? <laughs> like, <Yep. laughs> but it's like the best support. Well, one of the best supports. Yeah, yeah. No, it's really awkward. I made a video <laughs> recently because I'm currently playing a Fireball Trickster, and uh, I just said in the video, I'm not going to explain how Ignite works. It's just this is what I'm doing, and then this guy was like really angry with me. He's like, "Why are you so lazy not to explain it?" And I'm just kind of like. I don't want to start to explain it, because if I start to explain it, I'm sure I'm going to say something wrong, and then I'm going to have Carve come in the comments, and he's going to be like, <laughs> oh, actually, God. Taki, and he's going to do like his eight like paragraph <laughs> essay. So yep. what I find is a lot easier to do now is just wait for someone like Carve to make a video, and then I'll wait for EE to make a video that people actually like watch like a bit later, because... <laughs> That's the thing. That's the thing. Like <laughs> this, I, I keep joking. Like So the, the <laughs> thing is, like there's a mechanic, Carve makes like a three-hour video on it, I try and watch it, and I like my brain turns off halfway through. So I try and watch it again, and like eight weeks later, I think I know how it works. And then you make like the fifteen-minute version of that three-hour version, and then people are like, okay, cool. But uh, I was recently my stream was have been obsessed about how to explain leech cleanly. And do you have your leech thing? There are so many things I, in PUE. It's just like fuck I, this, man. Even making the guide, like I was like, this seems like it's still complicated. And I just I had the subtitle of it's simple, right? Because it was complicated as all fuck. But uh, yeah. I like even explaining it. Some people were like, oh, I get it now. And other people are just like, you just made this worse for me. I don't understand. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I, that's the I don't know how to make it any that's easier. the thing. When you make it worse, like people come to me and they're like. Hey, Rise, could you explain how you like sextant your maps and stuff like that? And I'm just like, or not sextant, sorry, shape your maps and all that sort of stuff. And people, people really aren't interested in like the journey there and how I come to conclusions. They're like, no, I want to know, do I do underground C or do I do underground C? It's like, I mean, I could explain it, but then that makes it worse. And it's like a three hour video. That's currently my struggle. Yesterday I tried, uh, we're making a video on how to um, get like shaper orbs in SSF through vendoring shaped maps and stuff like that. It's like a seven minute video and yeah, that's going to be a big like, how the fuck does this even go through? And then there's people like engineering who can explain this in like two minutes and somehow it makes sense and gets to the point. I don't know, dude. <laughs> but, yeah, it's not easy. I mean, when when you're writing the scripts for this stuff, like I rewrote that leech one like so many times, just trying to get the wording to sound even remotely right. Because there's so many, um, like especially with leech, there's so many words and terms they use that don't relate at all to what they change, and you have to try and make up terms for for what they're actually changing. It's it's really, it like the in-game terms don't make it do it any justice. Like half the terms for that are like seven words long. Like I don't know how to easily condense that. So it's, it's so easy to misspeak as well. 
Just because, yeah. like, on the most basic level of increased versus more, it's so easy to misspeak saying, oh, so this gives you more damage. And people are right. like, oh, it's a more multiplier. Like, no, no, it's not yeah. a more multiplier. It's just, it just gives you slightly increased damage. <laughs> no, that's I'm using the increased word. It, like, adds stuff on top of what you had before. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. W what have uh, you been up to, aside from sm slamming your head into walls with uh, EE? I, me? Or... Yes, you. E -E. Me? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Not, oh, by the way, this works dark key. <laughs> so I guess uh, I started at the beginning of the league off with like a, a Fizz Gladiator, and I didn't want to make a guide on it because I already sort of had a guide on it. So then I was rushing to make another character, so I made the Charge Dash character, which kind of came about randomly because I said, oh, you know what? I kind of want to play around with the, uh, the Fate of the Vol or the Story of the Vol, whichever one it is. And um, that was an interesting weapon, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it, so I made like a million different trees. I said, I haven't played with Charge Dash yet, so... Um, I played around with the changes on that, and it was actually a lot of fun with mapping, but bossing was still not very fun with it, because um, in the beginning of the video, I explained that you could wrap the thing around uh, bosses, and it looks like what it should be happening is that all of the little the little phase guys that go out and cause these little uh, AoE explosions, it looks like those should overlap, because that's just how the graphic is. It doesn't do that. That whole thing that goes out is just one big AoE that pulses for no reason other than to look like that. So all those little AOE pulses will only hit a single enemy once. Um, but each each new wave will hit a single enemy multiple times. That's how Mark worded it, and I was like, this this is really confusing. So basically, every time it pulses, that one pulse can only hit one the single enemy once. So if you like wrap it around a boss, it'll only hit it once per actual pulse of your thing, which is scaled by your attack speed. So basically, the best way to play it is to just hold it down, let go, hold it down, let go, hold it down, let go to get the end multiplier with really fast attack speed. Kind of like how it was before, but you don't have to worry about your movement speed as much, because if you twist the guy, it'll add more stacks to your final explosion. So it became really awkward to do bosses, because you'd have to keep wrapping it in. I showed in the video when I was trying to do Elder, I got caught in the slow, and I just it released, and it just went right into the uh, right into the explosion. It killed me. I was like, all right, we're going to Blade Flurry for bosses. Dude. So, the that whole was day annoying. yesterday, people were like, dude, play Charge Dash, and I like played around with it in my hideout. It's so confusing how like the cursor is dependent on like where your character is and now where yeah. the spirit is. So yeah, it, it was like super confusing. But then I saw the pulses and everything. I'm like, oh, that looks really cool. That like, this is gonna sh this shit's gonna overlap. Uh -huh. It's gonna be crazy. It's like, <laughs> I can like people are like, how are you gonna deal single target with this? I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna wrap myself around the boss. And I'm just gonna hit it a million times, dog. Easy. It's like, <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not touching that shit. Well, it's annoying, but yeah, I mean, once you get used to playing it, it's really comfortable to just zip around maps with. But yeah, and the bosses and single target, it was, it, it could probably work if you did it a different way. Like you got some sick gear, but I don't know. It wasn't like I just changed blade flurry and I just did a million more damage. <laughs> it's like why. Doesn't it also but, like get stuck on stuff? Because I was watching a lot of Uber stream when Uber found yeah. out about Charge Dash, and every second I mean, word was Charge Dash, but it just gets stuck on walls, right? Like, it would get stuck on. It was actually particularly annoying sometimes in incursions when the stupid incursion boss would be just like, "I'm gonna go hide in the corner," and then my guy Charge Dash would just move like one step, and you'd only get one multiplier. And I was like, "Oh my god, get out of the corner!" Um, but other than that, it wasn't too bad because you could actually twist it through doors and walls and stuff like that, and you like just zip through walls, but. Um, yeah, I mean, after that, I moved on to doing stuff with Fireball, so... Can um, you, can you hit enemies uh, going behind the walls, and uh, yeah. do they notice you? Yeah, so you can, you can, like, line of sight them effectively, so you could wrap it so around So they don't even attack not. you? I don't know if they, they may, because I, I don't really pay attention, because I was going so fast, but if, as long as they're not, like, outside of the, the sleep zone or whatever, outside of your screen where you can't damage them or something like that, um... Yeah, they, you could, you could hit them when they're behind a wall because you can wrap it. So, I I think um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but can't you just like make the ghost go really far away and just never teleport to it? Because I'm pretty sure yeah, I you, saw it, Uber it has doing a max, that. It has on, a max distance, yeah. but you can make it go um, to that max distance and just hold it, and then it'll pulse. But yeah, um, I, I'm pretty sure I saw him doing that on the. I can't. Remember, the, what's the stupid like red map? Uh, it's got the Mervale boss, and there's all the ledges. You know. Oh, um, Maelstrom? 
Uh, underground. Well, there's there's mineral pools. Mineral that's... pools. The, the oh, outdoor that's a, that's layout with the yeah. phase boss, and there's loads of batteries. He couldn't make one of the jumps on his yep. trapper, and he was just killing the pack. Like, oh, look how strong this is. But he was playing like art traps, holding down charge dash for three <laughs> minutes, killing like one white mob. He's like, this is so <laughs> powerful. The only problem with that is like you can you can snipe them right, but then you got to go to them right after you let go if mm. it lets if it if it makes you go across because sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't if it doesn't think you can stand there it won't won't teleport you but other times it will and you're like oh god i don't want to be here um but yeah it's it could probably use some more work what if, what if you charge dash hold it and then cast lightning warp on your on your current location when you release Ooh. you teleport and teleport back um, I wonder. I don't know if the. Um, I, I know I they have I've all the action setup. viewing problems, but you may be able to do that. Charge hmm. dash, cast when channeling, detonate <laughs> mines, and you prelay a smoke mine. <laughs> Boom. Oh god. I was thinking, like, why is it so annoying with charge dash when you get stuck in walls? Because it's not just that, like, you get stuck in walls. It's that if you hit a wall, you can still hold it down, but you can't turn the spirit anymore, right? Yeah, he but just stops. I, yeah, now I have this image because, like, it thinks of how it moves. It thinks where your character is and now where your cursor is. Then I can just imagine people, like, hitting a wall when trying to go through a door and then, like, from 10 minutes trying to, like, bounce back and forth to get through the entrance. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. See, that was the thing because people <laughs> kept telling me it was really nice for doing, like, lab trials, but it seemed super rippy to me that you'd get, like, stuck on a wall and then just get, like, stuck in, like, a spinny blade or something and just die. I don't know. Yeah, it's not so bad for, like, the open, like, floor blades or the bundle traps, things like that, because you can just teleport over them really fast or across, like, sometimes they'll have the uh, zigzagging Z sh shape and you can just kind of go across. But, yeah, if you, if, you, if you aren't careful with how you're moving him and he gets stuck on a wall, then... Then you'll either die because you're sitting in the trap, or you teleport somewhere where you don't want to go. So it's like a gamble if you really want to try it. But um, I was just, I, I just leap slammed everywhere where I didn't want to, you know, deal damage because I'm just so used to using it. That's fair. All right. Well, before we get into a 50 minute run about ignite being too good or too bad, uh, Wolfie, what have you been playing recently? Uh, I have been playing with the live based Whispering Eyes Trapper, Inquisitor. And uh, <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, tell us more. So, so the damage is great, except mm -hmm. it is very clunky. Because first you need to wait for the traps to fly, then you need to wait for the traps to trigger, and then you need to wait for the ice storm to start hitting enemies. So at first it was, it felt really good because I did a lot of damage. And I wasn't, I wasn't too squishy, but now it's just, eh, I kind of regret doing that. <laughs> that was, I was thinking about leveling up this league with like a Firestorm Trapper, because it's like, oh, that seems like a good idea, because if you don't have that much mobility, then it just deals a ton of damage, and it's kind of large AoE and stuff, and it would basically be like Whispering Guys minus the annoying scaling. But then I was like, nah, I'm going to, it's like a damage, over, like a super damage over time effect because of what you said, where it's just like, you got to throw it, it has to land, and it has yeah. to pop, and it has to rain down, and it has to hit the mob. I mean, not only that, it's like a damage over time to your face, because you've got to look at the screen as well. Like, I can't play Firestorm, because when you play like a proper, like a good Firestorm build, it's like, I can't fucking see anything, because there's shit everywhere. So I would never really no, want to play one you, of those builds. No, you don't, you don't wait to see enemies die. You just throw the trap and move on. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You don't have to see the enemies if you play a good no. build, Tarkin. Yeah. Come on. I mean, I, I'm sorry I don't get all of my builds from Red Eye, Rice. You know. Uh, <laughs> this, this, is, this is how Rise plays uh, PUE. Go, goes on to like, PUE profile. Okay, has Red Eye made a build I want to play? Has Zai made a build I want to play? Has Steel made a build I want to play? Well, my current build is dog shit, so let's see what Steel's doing. And yeah. then I'll come on Bay Class and bitch at Taki for playing his own builds. Uh, that's, that's really yeah. been a pattern for me lately. It's like, oh, okay. I want to play something fun. What has Red Eye been playing recently? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. The shit that he makes is just like, it just works for me, dude. He just makes builds that I, I really click with. Actually, funny fact, the whole drama with Moors, with the Arf Incinerate and Build of the Week, old school shit, no, nobody remembers, I'm sure. Uh, Red Eye actually had 
because with Mars, it was like bullshit, right? Because he never made the build. Like, none of that ever happened. But with Red Eye, he actually had a forum post about it for like three months before I like even started theory crafting anything. So <laughs> that, I stole it from Red Eye and not from Mars. Just by yeah. the way. Yeah. I, I feel you though. I have that with Waggle. It's like, I feel like Waggle is the person I could be if I wasn't shit at everything. Whenever Waggle makes a build, I'm like, yeah, that's 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 a build I'd enjoy. But I'm always doing like the SSF version of his build, which is always the worst thing. It's like, oh, you've you've built it around this very interesting, unique that I don't have. Let's do the budget version of this. Hmm. And my problem with Waggle is that he's actually like a good player. So if I take builds from him, I just die. So it's like, yeah, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> but Red Eye, on the other hand, that's yeah. my man. <laughs> But, uh, sorry, so, with the Whispering Ice being slightly clunky, uh, is, are there any redeeming qualities to the build? I'm curious. Uh, Chilling Ground doesn't damage, hack anymore. Yeah. Chilling Ground, you run Blasphemy Time Chain, so it should be defensive, unless enemies hit you. Oh, um, also using Casting Damage taken with Frostwall. Which increases survivability dramatically, especially against uh, ranged the enemies. <laughs> the mobs live longer. <laughs> 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 is, is it actually useful? It's actually really good against the chaos spinners. Yep. I used it briefly. It's definitely useful. It's, it's okay. Oh. Doesn't it take like a second to pop up? Like starts in the middle and then spreads? The frost wall? So does it actually, like if you oh, go into an incursion? Instant. It's just instantly a wall? It just puts up like yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But the problem is, it, it targets that directly onto enemies. So sometimes the enemies jump in, in front in front of the frost wall and can still hit you. Oh. But uh, if there are a lot of enemies, it's still helpful. That actually sounds like a good idea. If it pops up all at the same time, because I remember mm -hmm. I would only use it for like PvP pretty much in like the Battle Royale and stuff, and then you could it would feel like it pops up from the middle and like spreads to the edges. But if it all pops up... Then... It's pretty much instant. Uh, but you do need to have some kind of uh, ability to move through the frost wall. Because you can block yourself in a corner somewhere and just uh, die. <laughs> Especially in the labyrinth. <laughs> yeah, I, I would take it out of the castle when I was taken for labyrinth. I used it briefly. I was playing a trapper and I had a tinker skin, so I had 100% out on phasing. So I tried it out as kind of like a meme. And it was like, it was okay. I, I used it for like two minutes. It was it was not the worst. <laughs> or two um, minutes. But uh, one thing that I I want to ask you about, and I'm shocked that not more people are doing it. Why is no one else using the meme Ziggy D ring? The meme Ziggy D ring is amazing for ignite. Why is no one doing that? Because you get opals. <laughs> yeah. Get opal rings. They're better. And Plus... then you get real. You get real elemental equilibrium, and it's better. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and elemental damage with attack skills. So this is another thing that I thought that it still works like wet, but no, it's literally just, if you use an attack skill, it gives you elemental damage, like global elemental damage. So it scales both your ignite and your initial damage, which is, yeah, really That's why it's, it's really powerful for, like, um, percentage explosions as well, because it'll do that, like, with uh, Infernal Blow. <clears throat> gives a little skill there. And you can place a, a golem inside it, and it will trigger a EE. Yeah, but then you're using a golem. Mm. Golems are particularly bad this that, week. That's, that's the problem. I was, um, when I was making my build, I'm using the elementalist for mine. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll get the golem nodes and get some extra buffs from them. And I was like, I'd either spawn them myself with minion life, and they die all the time, or they'd get me killed. Or they <laughs> just was like, okay, we're not using golems anymore. Just yeah. get rid of that node. No, I think I, I seriously considered it for the Explosive Arrow, and it looked pretty good. But then with Explosive Arrow, I'm like using Orb of Storms, which helps on the single target. So Dab is really good with EE, and then with Elemental Equilibrium. Yeah. See, <laughs> and so then, uh, that's what yeah. I was doing, because on my Fireball character, I've got the Ziggy D ring, which if anyone doesn't know in chat, it gives you uh, Elemental Equilibrium with 75% effectiveness. And I just shove my Orb of Storms in that. So I just drop that on the boss, and then it procs, you know, 
everything. I think it's that's absolutely worth it. It's just with me, there's so many things that I can proc so effectively because I also have Reign of Arrows, Vol Reign of Arrows for like applying, and then we're using a cool rain, so it doesn't even feel like you've got an animation. You just click it and it goes, and then still moving, right? It's like a freaking, yeah, like you click a potion. So for that, yeah, but I think more people definitely should consider it because it's like what. 37 percent yeah it's, it's minus 37 percent um elemental resistances and that doesn't get scaled down by like it's not like casters which get scaled down on bosses and it yeah. still gives you something like 40 or 50 positive positive resistances in the end and if you compare that to using like an essence worm in a build it's like comparable damage to using like essence worm anger or whatever but it actually gives you some resist so it's actually better for some things but um just so like people kind of know so we've all played a ignite build this league but like what kind of ignite build was it so i did fireball trickster what about you guys uh i did a fireball elementalist i did lightning trap conversion elementalist i did explosive arrow elementalist i did righteous fire impulsa almost stormfire ring explosion elementalist which was supposed to be a ignite based righteous fire but then i never got the stormfire so i got fucked over there but i'll tap into that again because i think it's got potential i just did the uh, burning arrow that's all oh how is burning arrow by the way because that's like for well, leveling is great but i was doing the lighting version with the stormfire arrow and uh, the tempest bow hmm. but uh I don't know, it does feel kind of awkward. It feels great until you go into higher maps, like tier 10 maps, and then it just doesn't scale very well. Or mm. unless you need to invest a lot. At least yeah. that was my impression. Mm. What, I, no, what I've I, seen... I, oh, go ahead. You go ahead. Oh, please. Um, <clears throat> from what I've seen with a lot of the Ignite base builds, they almost all seem to have very similar damage in the end. Um, maybe Explosive Arrow pulls ahead a bit because I haven't looked into that one completely. But um, they all seem to hit very similar damage numbers and it's just about different investments. So like with like Fireball, um, you basically invest in getting gem levels wherever you can. And then with Bow Builds, you invest in getting a lot of Abyss Jewels wherever you can. Um, and then like Elemental Hit, again, you go with levels and stuff like that. But they all, I was planning them all out and they all seem very similar uh, no matter what you tried to push them to uh, when you look at the end damages. Unless I was just missing something, but um, yeah, like for example, with with your the uh, lightning arrow or not lightning arrow, burning arrow, um, doing that, it's like if you, yeah, we showed the video of where you invested more in your abyss jewels and you get pretty similar damage to an example build. Um, it just I don't know. It seems like they all hit a ceiling at some point, like way I, earlier than uh, damage up front builds. I so, did fail to craft uh, a flame blast build. I wanted to see how much ignite damage can you push. So I did manage to get 1.3 million ignite DPS against the Shaper at level 97 on a 230 exalt build. <laughs> Holy shit. It's just and, then you, and then you spend like 5x on a Blade Flurry build or whatever. And <laughs> you have like three times that damage. Yeah. Like, I God forgot. Damage. I also played Flame Blast and I also played uh, Incinerate Ignite. Both of which were pretty cool. Flame Blast is just tiring, but Vault Flame Blast fucking... Vault Flame Blast is oh. nice. Did you enjoy Incinerate, though? Like, Incinerate looks terrible to me. It's... I couldn't really invest it, because it was, like, during the race. I think Incinerate's got pretty massive potential. I think it's definitely better than, like, Flame Blast, I for instance. I played two Incinerate builds to speak. First was with Castle channeling some kind of shenanigans with CI. I didn't like it, but uh, I then tried a very fast trickster. And uh, at the start, I didn't like it, but at around level 60, when I got a lot of attack speed, cast speed, and all that stuff, then it became pretty decent for clear speed, but it is still awkward. Uh, you kind of need to jump from one pack to another pack, like uh, almost like using uh, uh, Blade Vortex, except you cannot recharge your damage. So. The AoE could be nice, but the ramp up the, to ramp up the AoE does feel kind of clunky, and it uh, yeah. doesn't feel smooth. I feel I feel like that's his biggest problem that it gets AoE with stages, which is really annoying. Yeah. But overall, 
yeah, you say you played it with a tricks. Did you scale the ignite or did you just play? Uh... Uh, I used ignite for clear speed, but I swapped uh, proliferation uh, against the uh, bosses for. I can't remember what I swapped for, but I did get uh, up to about 900,000 Shaper DPS, but that is with uh, Val Righteous Fire buff. And that is that was on a budget, basically. Well, two or three X budget. I think my issue with Incinerate is it's kind of like, if you want to clear speed with like the Ignite setup, you're going Fireball. This is assuming just from a spell point of view. Like, we'll ignore the attacks and all If you want to go like clear speed Ignite, you go Fireball. And then if you want like the biggest Ignite possible, you do like Vol Flame Blast. So why would you play Incinerate? It's got like slightly better clear than flame blast but worse clear than fireball and it's got because it looks cool than flame blast so it's just i like... think it's better than both of those actually. why uh, out of interest just because um uh, with fireball and you said fireball and flame blast so pretty much even if you were to play on a trickster i can imagine in like open map meta fireball being faster but because we are in closed map meta incinerary is just much smoother and if you get enough uh, attack speed and cast speed, you've got so much mobility and you've got so much AoE through proliferation that it just feels, at least to me, it felt like it was always enough. My problem was that I didn't have those things because I was like a leveling elementalist. But on a trickster, I can absolutely imagine it being definitely better than Flame Blast, 100%, uh, probably even with maybe more single target because like uh, the mistake that a lot of people make too is that they forget that you can like incinerate as a hit now it's got crit chance so you can like really bust out some nasty damage oh and i wasn't damage. playing crit i was just playing non-crit if i yeah, did crit, yeah, yeah. i would have even more damage yeah yeah no i'm just talking about like if we were to talk uh you know actual like shaper damage or something if you're trying to make a boss yep. killer then it hits pretty frequently so you've got good survivability it hits mobs faster so it's technically safer right because the mobs get stunned and all this sort of stuff it yeah but then you've got to like actually stand because okay so like this is the thing like people no talk it's really it's really not yeah. standing like that's the thing because most people imagine it as a standing and if you don't scale it properly i can see how that's the case because that was the case for me but if you get enough cast speed it's like just you just tap that's it yeah and it's like a point two cast and you just move on to the next pack and the proliferation takes care of the rest i had 15 casts per second on my trickster which is uh Basically, in one second, I can release two waves at maximum stage, almost. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, just... And that didn't feel good? It did feel good. Okay, yeah. Maybe EE can chime in on this, because I haven't had a chance to really push my... Like, the highest thing I've done, I think, with my current character is only, like, tier 10. It's only, like, level 85 or some shit. So I've already done, like, no content at all. That... But uh, even up to, like... Tier 10, you can quite easily run like both GMP and Chain if you want to with Fireball, mm -hmm. and it clears fine. And the yeah, fact you can... you can really go push with it. Like, how far did you push your character of interest? Uh, it's about level 90 now, and I did a Hydra with more monster life, and it was really easy. I just had elemental weakness on the map, wasn't elemental weakness capped, and I ran into one of the balls twice, and I died. But other than that, it was extremely easy because you just slap him with the fireball, put down Orb of Storms and run around in circles or Scorching Ray him. Um, <clears throat> but it wasn't too bad. And then, uh, yeah, when you're map clearing, you could even put in something like a Poacher's Aim for a pierce through like a pack or whatever. But basically all I did was I put on a Bright Beak and GMP and then I got flat cold or lightning to my attacks. And then I just hit a pack and then shield charge through them to trigger my EE on the back end if there was any like strong monsters. So you just like throw a couple of uh, fireballs and shield charge and then hit ball fireball and just shield charge the whole map and then throw a couple fireballs. And it's like, it's really fast to clear maps, even if you don't use pierce or chain. Um, I really didn't have any problems either way with it because with um, the elementalist rotating AOE buff, even though it sucks and it's rotating, most of the time you end up getting that AOE buff during one of your vol fireballs or something. And it's just like your whole screen is just covered in prolifts and giant fireball explosions. So I found it pretty good um, throw content. My main issue is that since it's fireball and you attack slow, you have no uh, abusable recovery mechanic or leech or anything like that. So you really have to play uh, smart, use flasks, and try and get regen and stuff where you can. So that's like the biggest downside of it. But I mean, other than that, I have a tabula on and I have over 7,000 effective life with Mind Over Matter. 
Um, or you just do the exact so, same build as a trickster and you have sustain because you're a trickster because that's what i did we, i mean you don't yeah. so on bosses you're not going to have life sustain you'll have you have mana you gain mana right when you use skills you have a chance to gain mana. yeah like you're constantly just your mana constantly yeah. refills which is quite nice to like a mom build because that's always the one thing that i dislike about mom is like when your mana gets chunked shit how do i regen it quickly Whereas when yeah. it's trickster, it's just constantly just like ping pong. Do you up. do you bother using a uh, mana flask with that still, or do you do you drop that? Um, I'm so I dropped the mana flask and was running a fourth utility. I'm trying out a hybrid flask. I don't really like it. I'm just trying it, but mm -hmm. I, I'm not entirely sure what I want to do. I think the ideal setup would be if I could get one to drop an SSF. The rallying cry threshold jewel is super underrated. Um, that's the uh i know rise is laughing his ass off waggle no, uses that he uses it if i know uses that, that's it, it the thing again. every time i hear that every time it's like oh maybe you want to try the rallying cry special <laughs> jewel i'm like i can't remember what it does but i don't think it's that good it's like waggle uses it i'm like okay I'll, i guess i'll look at it i've looked at it five times before but every time i looked at it it's like not so good and then exactly same thing happened like two days ago and then i look at it and i'm like eh. I don't but, like it. <laughs> but basically, if anyone doesn't know what it does, it's like uh, when you get hit, it's like a percentage of the damage you take, you regain as mana. Carve uses it as well and is like face tank boss killers. And the thing is, is if you have it, it's like impossible to ever go oom because mm -hmm. you're always passively regening mana. Um, I, was, I was considering getting the Watcher's Eye with that with clarity. You could also do that. I just didn't do it on mine. <clears throat> I... <laughs> Uh, that's some investment <laughs> that, that's the thing like that's the thing which is so really funny about like the whole like ssf versus uh trade league thing is like we've got to try and like make these really stupid setups and so i was like yeah i just got this like triple vitality watches i like, kind of <laughs> just did the job for me it was fine uh, and then you gotta and then you gotta make uh like a guide for it too that's my favorite part it's like well here's the guide guys it's budget because it's SSF, <laughs> but it's SSF, but you can play it in Trade League because it works. However, I don't have this, 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 and this that would make your character better if you were in Trade League. It's like, hey, I'm making two builds instead of one for this guy. <laughs> yeah, it's like the same way with mine. People always ask me, oh, can you do this for hardcore or solo cell found? I'm like, just take the things that you can't use out of it. And does it still work? <laughs> no, <laughs> but you can't. So I, it's like, I don't know. It's yeah. annoying. That happens a lot for sure. <clears throat> well, what can you do? This is this is what GGG gave us, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's our fault. This is what <laughs> we want, but we also hate it. <laughs> so would we say that we're happy then with the current state of Ignite? Because we've all just kind of like said Ignite without saying if we actually like it or not. I actually think it's surprisingly decent. Like it's not the best end game, but it's def I know you're shaking your head. You can tell me why I'm wrong once I finish rambling. But I feel like it kind of does what I want it to do. So Ignite used to be like one of the best league starters. And I kind of feel like it's a really solid league starter with just a tabula, nothing else equipped. Some of the smoothest leveling I've had in early mapping. Um, and it requires very little outside of that basic thing. And then if you want to push it into the content, you can. But then you need to like actually address it. Wolfio, tell me while I'm wrong. You're not wrong. I'm just shaking my head because I don't think that it is in a good place. It's uh, it's kind of strange. For leveling, it's really smooth, but if you want to scale it to the end game, it, it does require quite quite a lot of investment. So for leveling, it's definitely smooth and nice. Have you tried elemental hit? <laughs> <laughs> That's cheat. That's, That's it. cheating. Yeah, I agree. Sorry. <laughs> you were saying sorry. Uh, I finished. Uh, <laughs> I, I think then. ignite works very well on. On certain builds, on certain setups like Fireball or um, <clears throat> the big hitting skills, um, I think it struggles to like. You can't really scale it with like Incinerate because it's a lot of small hits and then a, a big more multiplier. But you have to scale area and cast speed, which do nothing for for ignites. Um, and then you also have to worry about not getting spell damage and like. There's there's limited uh, there. It's there, but as as Wolfio said and as we've discussed, it's like very big investment to push its ceiling up. Whereas other builds, you don't need that that serious of an investment to get it going. Um, it's it's usable, but it's not something that people would be like, "Damn, I gotta play this like instantly." Like it's a it's a boss killing machine. Unless there's something I haven't seen yet, but um, oh, okay. yeah, that's that's my <laughs> next build. So, I, actually, I was also thinking about doing elemental hit. Has anyone even did a normal elemental hit where you would not? 
focus only on fire damage and uh, use those other mechanics like increase damage against the uh, shock what was it against the uh, shock the uh, frozen it's and ignited right yeah. yeah and using all three elements with elemental equilib uh, equilibrium <laughs> I have no Fuck. idea if anybody's tried that. I've seen some people doing pure lightning, but the problem with the pure lightning one is the damage range is so big that the hits will be like tiny or huge. So it's it's tough. But um, yeah, most of the time, I've what I've seen is mostly just avatar fire scaling or uh, pure fire. But that's like cheating. Outside of doing that, I have been told that apparently it's like a better lightning arrow. Like I've had some people say that just like if you're just in like an elemental bow build, it's the just, same mechanic. Yeah, it's just a mm -hmm. better lightning arrow, and you don't need to like go full meme with it. So you could try that maybe. It's just lightning arrow that you have to equip a threshold jewel on, and none that's not really none necessarily depends on how you want to scale it. Uh, I mostly agree with you guys. However, I do see a lot of people still making a lot of mistakes with ignite builds, and I'm still learning it too. And it feels like. If you deem, like, for instance, if you're playing hardcore, if you're playing SSF, whatever, if you think, like, totems are the thing to go, I feel like Ignite is just a better version of that. But it also is that it does seem like GGG is really scared of Ignite getting out of hand, and that's why they're, like, modifying gems specifically. Like, we've never really had that before, where it's like, well, there's this entire mechanic that we build around, but then you've got this one gem that gets 80% more ignite damage. It's like, it seems like they're really trying to just not allow it to get it out of hand, especially with the fact that they haven't modified the, what is it, a, a, Agony? The perfect, perfect Agony. agony. Yeah. yeah, they haven't modified that at all. So I think it's in an interesting space right now. It works pretty well, but... Yeah, it's never really, it doesn't seem like it's ever going to go back to the glory days of like, this is the best thing we've ever seen just because the game's progressed so much more. Yeah, I think that's fair. I also think that it's, as you say, it's like in an awkward readability state because it's so hard to explain. How do you guys feel about the fact that, so basically the main two ascendancies you do for it are either Elementalist and Trickster. And then if you're playing an Elementalist, you don't really have any good starting nodes unless you're doing Mom, then you can like root through the mana. That's like one thing which just feels really bad to me. It's like, yo, you're an Elementalist, yeah. skip that's, all the that's spell That's what damage. I did. Yeah. I went through the mana. Elementalist is... Elementalist is great for everything but Ignite. Yeah. Like, straight up, in my opinion. The thing, the reason why Elementalist is uh, really nice for Ignite isn't because Elementalist is nice. It's because, one, if you're playing an Ignite build, you are using a Stormfire. Like, I just see no reason to ever not use it. Unless you're just not zoom zooming at all, you don't care about that. But if or you're you zoom zooming. Have one, because fucking SSF, by the way. Yeah, sure. But, like, it's just so much. It's so much fucking damage. Like, it's just hard not to. And then you've got Impulsa. So I think, like, if Impulsa was less of a thing, and then Elementalist would have, like, a 5% shock explosion or something when things are shocked. If you would just give like half of Impulsa to Elementalist somehow, then it would be a little bit different. But right now, I feel like because of how powerful the Ignite uh, proliferation gem is and how just amazing Trickster is for everything Zoom Zoomy, which is you know primarily the meta stuff. Uh, yeah, I feel like that's kind of the issue with Elementalist and Trickster kind of takes over in that aspect. If you really truly want to zoom zoom, unless you find some sort of gimmick to work it out, so yeah, the main I don't thing... think by any means elementalist is a bad class. It just sucks that it has these things that enable it so much more than I think anything else in the game. Really, mm -hmm. maybe the only comparison is like a Sunder Dead Eye with Hemophilia gloves, where those are really strong. But then you've got Insanity too. I don't know. I don't feel like there's any other combination of like ascendancy to item in the game where it's just like this is fucking this makes it work. Hmm. Yeah, I've tried explaining that a few times on stream, and the thing which is a little bit awkward about elementalist is even if you're not doing the whole like impulse and meme route, like the golem route again is like oh you want to do golems? You got the golem jewels? Nah, all right, get fucked. It's really awkward how they've just got this like one ascendancy just tied around all of this stuff. Um, I wish I wish they would look into that because that's such a cool thing. Like I wish they would look into 
the availability of the primordial gems because it used to be that if you played a golemancer you were a summoner but now if you play a golemancer you can be a golemancer with elementalist you can be a hybrid character you can just use them as essentially a stat stick because they give global damage depending on how you scale things like there's so much cool potential there but it's gated by this like well this gem isn't really rare not well except the might it's like not that rare but you're still never gonna get it it's like but you can buy it for one chaos off of xyz it's like uh, come on man i, I want to talk about that later i i feel like we're in a really awkward situation with quite a lot of items where they don't seem to be doing a purpose in either trade league or ssf like you have these items which are common enough that in trade league it's like let me spam a thousand people to use afk for the one out trade but they're obnoxious enough that SSF players will never get them. And they were gonna make a fucking vendor for Threshold Jewels, decided not to last minute because they're worried about like corrupted gems or some shit. And it's like, but you keep making stuff balanced around these. I would like to play the new Ellie Hit, but I haven't got the Ellie Hit Jewels. But the Ellie Hit Jewels are kind of worthless being a drop in Trade League because they're so common, it's gonna cost you like an Alk. So I just don't think see what the point is. I wouldn't I wouldn't even limit it to SSF like that's the thing too because I don't think the game should be balanced around SSF and most certainly drops shouldn't be balanced around balanced around SSF just so we're clear about that but it's like if you're playing this build if you're using this ability whatever you will get those jewels whether you're playing SSF or not you're just going to go to trade and you're going to buy them or you already have them so like a vendor for that sort of stuff is you know it's like it's it's to me, it's comparable to like currency vendors, right? Where you've got jewelers and you want fusing, so you just exchange them and that's it. Or instead, if they're worried about corrupting the jewels, we... we oh, hold on. <laughs> we get them corrupted. <laughs> um, Bye, Dugga. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dog uh, next door, and as soon as she hears the chain or the collar move, it just goes off. Um, but instead of, of having jewels uh, for our threshold jewels, when we have the gem equipped, we then get a drop-down menu on our jewel socket to select the, 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 the threshold jewel that we want for it that you can't corrupt <laughs> and you can't mess with. <laughs> That sounds like a Reddit solution. I love you guys. Love uh, this. No. Like, there's a very yeah. simple problem. There's I like, like guys, I, I solved it. It's five in the morning. <laughs> if we bring out this Excel spreadsheet and we do the prerequisite quest and the law, then due to its Ziri time traveling, we can then add a vendor which sells you portal scrolls. And you're like, oh, I think it's, I it's think simple to me. I don't see the problem. I I think that's an amazing solution. I don't think it would ever happen oh, no. because I think GGG wants like people to engage with this, even though they know, like, oh, I'm going to use this ability, I'm going to need this threshold jewel, like, they know this, that the, in most cases, if there is a threshold jewel, the ability is balanced around it. It doesn't really fill the purpose that it originally was supposed to have to enrich your playstyle or change it up. It's like, no, the, the skill, the, you use the skill, you equip these two threshold jewels, that's it. So... I would love that as a solution, but at the same time, I know that they're aware of this, and yet they're not making, they're not changing it. So there must be like something more to it that they just want us to do, like trade or make a mule. Maybe they really love us making mules and leveling new characters. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that's an amazing solution. I really like that. Yeah, I think somebody else in chat mentioned just getting them pre corrupted from a vendor or something like that. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, just so that. You can't abuse them because, yeah, if everybody's just spam buying them for like one alt and then just corrupting them, you get bring some back, crazy uh, big, bring back like Diablo 2 style vendoring where you go out of town and the vendor resets. So then you go out, come back in, you check out what's the corruption, and you go out, go back in, check the corruption. <laughs> <laughs> right. Make I it mean, real spicy. They can, if they did that. It would actually be really good because the one thing which would maybe stop them from doing that before was, oh, people might do funky vendor recipes, but they've stopped people doing that with, like, Shaper and Elderings, because, you know, I used to, like, purposely collect yeah. five Corrupted to then get the original. If they've stopped people doing that, they could do the exact same thing with Jewel, stop people trying to, like, do some crazy crafting thing. 
So have them just like blank corrupted. They get no special implicit or anything. You have to kill Katava in Act 5 to unlock it. Boom, let's go. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Fucking Pogchen. I, I like how Snow Kitty's like OB belts, like nobody fucking knows what that is. <laughs> Basically, once upon a time, Uber Elite had an obsession, okay? And he fulfilled his dreams and he can die happily now. That's that's what the OB belts legend is. <laughs> that is it. Actually, how good would that belt even be nowadays? Isn't it just rarity? It's like an implicit rarity belt, right? This is the part of the podcast where Ryze has a 10 minute conversation with himself. This is, this is my favorite <laughs> bit of every episode. Oh, it's Obi Sash is a Japanese kimono. Wait, you can get uh, corruption implicit now for rarity. I think so. Golden Obi. On, on the amulet. No. It is a 30, it's a 20 to 30 increased rarity of items found belt. Brilliant. That was amazing. Thank you, Ryze. So. <laughs> Do we miss uh, the whole, like, Call to Fire meme? I know we kind of have it with Stormfire. Is that something we want to see coming back? The, like, non-traditional Ignite builds? Um, so, like, uh, what is it? Um, is it the cold, the cold damage has tighter or smaller ranges than fire damage? I can't remember how yeah, they... Yeah, it is. yeah, it is. Right? Yeah, so it'd be even tougher in that sense because you're already wasting... You're already wasting resources to convert it to get no real benefit when you lose the freeze. So I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, what was the most popular way to do that before? Was there one before they changed uh, double dipping stuff? Oh, right. Yeah, I, I even played that. Yeah. Um, that was when you got the 100% conversion on that ring. Yeah. That was good because you got a lot of area. Like I did a whole screen vortex and killed the entire screen, then lightning warped or whatever to the next pack. Why but... is chat spamming muted? Look, okay, I forgot to turn off my Streamlab. Someone hosted us. There was a bring bring. I'm now currently trying to turn off all my notifications. I muted myself so no one would hear me angrily typing then ee -E couldn't remember that vortex is a thing so i said vortex by the way then they spam you and then you addressed it so i killed the entire conversation so yeah vortex by the way give me a minute yeah, i'm still thinking about the obi belt God damn. <laughs> it actually makes me really sad though because that shit used to be broken right and now it's like anything you can equip is just better <laughs> uh, well. Well, there was the whole thing about Elemental Hit. So none of us have played Elemental Hit yet, but everybody's considering it as their next build. Yeah, I had something planned out that I was going to yeah. start at the beginning of the next week. I was yeah. planning to play Elemental Hit now, but I think I'm going to do Incinerate instead, actually, after <laughs> the conversation. <laughs> but if you guys were to go about it, how would you do it? Because I've seen some softcore, oh, killed Shaper in 30 seconds type of thing, but I haven't really seen, like, build build around it if you were to go about it how would you how would you do it any initial thoughts uh wins just uploaded a video and he's got like eight or nine k life or something and he's mm. going zoom zoom with a bow and uh it's got like pretty tasty clear speed uh you can get like full queen oh, and, I saw that. and everything he like that wasn't even using combs i think he was using just like a six and claw weave or something and the damage on it does look like really disgusting um so Do you know what ascendancy that is? Is that just a dead eye? Uh, I think it was a dead eye. Maybe even like an ascendant. I honestly can't remember to be honest. 8k life, dead eye? I think I it was know. an ascendant, I think. Someone in chat will know. Ascendant would make sense. More sense. See, because that, that's my issue. It's like, well, do I want to do dead eye or scion? And then have to use Azov's blood and my build's actually good? Or do I play like Chieftain or Juggernaut for bossing and then my build doesn't cost anything, but it's also trash in comparison. And I never have the, even if I have the money to get Azov's blood, I never have the possibility of equipping it because it's not worth it. But then there's also like Elemental Overload over there, right by right by uh, Avatar Fire. So that's kind of worth it. I could get that. It's like, a, mm -hmm. it's really tough to make a choice that doesn't seal you to like a particular scenario. It's basically budget or non-budget. Yep. 
Yeah, my plan, if I was to do it, or if I'm when I'm going to do it, is Avatar of Fire conversion. Um, not going to bother getting a Zoth's Blood. You could, but it's like out of my my considered budget range for most of the builds that I do. Um, so, yeah, I plan on going non crit elemental overload, and then uh, putting some um, some rat action in mine. So. You, you know, I've realized you, just just to uh, to clarify one thing. I watched two build videos before today's stream. I watched the wins video, and then I saw a Marty Namahu video. Marty had 8k life on an Ascendant Namahu build. That makes a lot more sense. I was about to pop yeah. off on you. Yeah, and wins. <laughs> I I just opened up the... You got me fucking yeah. like yeah. this, yeah. dude. And here I check the video, <laughs> and it's like not even 6k life. <laughs> but, 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 if you were to take uh, Marty's PogChamp Namahu build and weapon swap <laughs> into a bow... <laughs> <laughs> Somehow that's miraculously gonna give us 2k life. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Yoko yeah. Suffering's pretty OP too. I don't yeah, know honestly, I Yoko Suffering is, is is something that definitely definitely amps up a lot of builds because like you can apply chill to enemies with Avatar Fire with like Vortex or uh, Cold Snap, and then you can use Yoko Suffering to get a chance to shock. Um, of course, non-elementalist is a bit harder, and then you, of course, can ignite while you have that. So you got, um, you, know, you just got two for elemental hit that count, and then uh, for yoke of suffering, you got three. So you get enemies take fifteen percent increase, which is more multiplier if you don't have anything with it. So it's pretty good. Can That's we take a, a moment to talk about how strong cast and damage taken cold snap is? Oh, I've been amazing. using that on my build, yeah. yeah. You get you get friend well you get the possibility of getting frenzy charges if you're not something like trickster and then you also it chills a really large area actually um, and I've been using that and it's been pretty nice. Mm, that sounds cool mm. for like chapters and stuff. About that. <laughs> oh, I've mm -hmm. I've used it on every single character league. The only reason I'm not using it on my current build is because I am a trickster, so it's like I don't need it. I'm using a tempest shield instead. But the AOE on it is like insanely huge. It chills yeah, everything. I Every time I see it, I'm like, oh, what is this map mod that's going on right now? I'm like, oh, that's Cold Snap. <laughs> like, yeah. the ground is so large. But um, I haven't used that as a main casting spell, spell at all, so I don't have know. Have you guys that... looked into that? Because, like, people keep telling me there's these, like, really weird shenanigans with Cold Snap, like, overlapping dot damage or something. And no I think they fixed the one. bug with that. I think the bug was that it was going through immunity phases on bosses, mm. and I don't know if it was stacking or not, but... It was kind of similar to, I think it was happening with the Assassin Poisons, where you'd have, you do Shaper damage, and you'd stack a bunch of poisons, and then while he was in his ball, uh, like his bullet hell phase, he would still be, he wouldn't be taking the damage then, but it would still roll through him after, like it wouldn't dissipate. And I don't know if it still does that or not, but um, yeah, it was something along those lines. I don't know if it was stacking, though. All right. It wasn't very clear. We went through the part where... Rice talks to himself for 10 minutes. Now we're going to go through the part where Rice learns mechanics. Did they ever <laughs> change the... So, for instance, in the past, if you were to use Vortex, but then you had Avatar of Fire, the Vortex degen would not deal damage. Did they ever change that, or is, it, is that still the case? I think it was uh... changed. Someone said that you wouldn't be dealing damage with Avatar of Fire with Vortex. You wouldn't be well. That was that was in the past. If you had Avatar Fire, the damage over time wouldn't change because the damage yeah, you over can time is deal... not a hit, and it only works with the. Yeah. No. Actually, I so... don't know. Okay, <laughs> good. Someone, <laughs> so just someone me... mentioned that uh, if you use Avatar of Fire on Vortex, then you deal no cold damage over time, just the fire yeah. damage. Yeah, that's what it used to be. But I wonder, okay, so other thing is, did they ever change, so you know how in the past, when double dipping was a thing, you could, for instance, take uh, Essence Drain, and Essence Drain would scale its damage over time portion with spell damage, and that would allow you to also scale uh, your Ignite, for instance, through spell damage. Is that changed now, or is that still a thing? Because no. that sounds really potent. That's dead as far that's, as I'm aware. That's dead long ago. Okay. Because yeah. the issue now, or well, with the way they changed it, is that they separated, then you have your base damage, then you have your hit and your yeah. um, ignite or whatever it is. And I, I've had to explain this to a bunch of people in, in chats, and it's really annoying when you're typing, because 
you're trying to type it and they're, they're just like, I don't get it. And like, I, I, I have to show you like a diagram because it's like you say base damage and then hit and then the ignite. And then they're like, well, what if the hit's bigger, the ignite should be bigger. Like, well, it's technically, I guess, if you consider the base damage, and like, oh, I don't get what you mean. No, no, no. I, I don't know if we're not talking about two different things. I mean how um, the oh. damage over time skills with spell damage modifier would allow you to scale your ignites. No. No, because it's separate. Yeah. That's that's attached to the the hit tag, not the the dot tag. Okay. Kind okay. Of thing. okay. So, um, I think that was the issue. Is that, or everybody was really concerned about that with caustic arrow and essence strain with those modifiers, like projectile modifiers, not applying to their damage because that's how they got a lot of their damage for those skills. Yeah. And I don't did they for caustic arrow did they add the projectile tag to that to the DJ? That still scales from projectile damage. It's yeah. Similar. So it's only on those specific ones that you can do it. The other ones they don't adapt tags. Kind of like how was it you put. Um, Death's Oath, where you put Arcane Surge or Duration, in, it, it adapts a tag or something like that. Um, I don't think you can't like make that happen on other skills. But that think. was changed as well. It doesn't was Death's Oath still scale Death that way? I thought it was changed with... They ch this shit is so inconsistent. So last <laughs> league, you could d put Summon Phantasm on Kill on Shield Charge, which then gave Shield Charge the spell tag or whatever word you want to use, yeah. so that you could then use Arcane Surge. And mm -hmm. I think this is the problem. So I made a video about this like a year or two ago, talking about Burning Arrow with the Lestoration. The problem is, is that there isn't the correct terminology for us to use. We talked about this early E. So I'll say stuff like it inherits the tag. That isn't what actually happens, but it's the yeah. easiest way to explain it. Then fucking Carve gets all like, well, actually, that's not really <laughs> how it works. It doesn't inherit the tag. It has this secret modifier. And you're like, Ugh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it doesn't. Oh, fuck like with off, the right. skills, that's another thing. That's another thing that I kept having to explain how people were confused that you still have to use uh, Arcane Surge to be able to use Rapid Decay, is it now? Or is that the Swift Affliction? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you still have to use it because most people thought that because Righteous Fire has a duration tag due to but all Righteous Fire now. Anymore. It was changed. You have to use it still. No. Yes. The duration tag only applies to Vol Righteous Fire and not to Righteous Fire itself. No, Otherwise, the gem I, I remember like... it was changed not long ago. I mean, I played Quick, the build till 99. But... <laughs> I would love to rise to have played that build to 100 the whole time with a wasted link. That'd be fucking no, amazing. No, I, I made, I made sure because like I'm not a big righteous fire guy, so I like looked into all this stuff. I don't know, maybe they briefly changed it or something. So what it, they did it definitely is, is still the case. They now. changed it whenever you went online, and then okay, they I take it, it back. back. It doesn't <laughs> work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, so that that's really weird. I don't know. There was another issue in the chat with like, oh gosh, I don't even remember something not scaling with projectile damage despite being an ability used through a bow. But I don't know if that wasn't a bug, and I can't pinpoint what it was anymore because that was a while ago. But, but like yeah. the amount of times I've weird had to like explain that. why rain of arrows scales with projectile damage, like there are lots of there are just lots of things, and you just. So it's just, it's the thing. It just, it does. Just shh, go away. But, um... But what does, th does, Rain of, does Rain of Arrows work with point blank? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Where does it yeah. source the initial, um, like, the distance? Is it sourced from your character? Or is it always point blank? See, that was exactly, it's... this was something that I had a big debate about. Okay, too. as far as I'm aware, based on something I read in Gangster Boo's chat six years ago <laughs> when Rain of Arrows was, like, a thing... Uh, it's from the base of your character, um, therefore you need to be like face tanking with it to get maximum point blank damage. Yeah. But, 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 it's to do from the center of the Reign of Arrows, not the edge of the Reign of Arrows. Is, is it not? Or is that the bit which has changed? Now it's just where the, it's basically where you are to the mob, where okay. the mob gets hit. So, okay, because I remember like that was my question too. Yeah, I had the same yeah. thought. I was like, yeah. no, I'm pretty sure. I said the exact same thing as you. Then I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure. And then yeah, we maybe they changed it, that but... like five years ago. But I remember, <laughs> I remember like back, back, back in the day, a friend of mine using chin salt, and he would always like pinpoint it on the middle of his feet. So he would like waste half of his AOE. I'm like, dude, why are you doing that? He's like, 
actually an Otaki. It's uh, the most efficient way of giving my most point blank damage. <laughs> if I moved it forward two inches, I'd be losing about 5% DPS. Uh, but uh, yeah, the whole nearby thing in and of its like, have you guys seen like the graph with like dead eye when nearby and long range? Like, what's the, mm -hmm. the sweet spot? And it's just like, yeah, but then you so... don't even know because on that graph, if we're talking about the same thing, you're talking about the far shot and the yeah, point yeah. blank and yeah. where it breaks off. Yeah, but then the far shot uh, stuff was inaccurate, right? He said that it was just like a description, but he doesn't actually know the numbers and nobody <laughs> does. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing I love with that. It's like, uh, guys, I've made this a uh, really helpful uh, spreadsheet. Now, uh, before we get into this, I'll say this could all be wrong, but uh, I've spent the last <laughs> three years perfecting this document <laughs> based on something I think I read once. I'm not sure. Um, um, yeah. That's kind of... That's been happening. I feel, I mean, overall, don't get me wrong, like the way things work uh, mechanically has been significantly improved overall and i think there's a lot of a lot less things that like break the game and in general if you bypass like the wording of things and the tagging and whatnot it does make a lot more it's like a lot more intuitive but then like if you're if you've played poe for like two years or something and you use still the other all the old stuff it's like it's so co contradictory so often mm -hmm. i mean like I mean, I could yeah. go. I could go over like the explosive arrow thing for like two minutes if you guys feel because it it makes sense, but then at the same time it doesn't. Like, I, I need stuff. to go to the loo. So if you want to talk about that for two minutes, rise, feel free to. Sure. I'm gonna be up. Right. <laughs> give me, give me a second. I gotta, I gotta find the thing. Damn, Tarkis never went to the toilet before like that. <laughs> okay. Special <laughs> case. Okay. So, okay, so this kind of makes sense. So Explosive Arrow in the past was never an attack, neither was it a spell. The Explosive Arrow itself was an attack, and the Explosive Arrow explosion was not considered an attack, right? It was and secondary it, effect. Yeah, it's a secondary effect, which, well, in the past, that wasn't really a thing either. I think it was. I feel like it was, I don't know, at some point the term secondary effect started getting tossed around and I'm like, oh, this is it the thing. It was on the wiki. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. Least, somehow somehow I've point. never like engaged with that. But basically, Diadem Dawn works with explosive arrows, explosions. And the wording on Diadem Dawn is enemies ignited by an attack burn 35% faster. And this has never worked before because the explosion of explosive arrow was never considered an attack. However, now it does work because somehow Diet and Dawn, I suppose, inherits the skills tag from what used to be weapon elemental damage to now be elemental damage with attack skills. So technically the wording should be enemies ignited by an attack skill burn 35% faster and the old tagging doesn't work. But the justification from GGG that we got was... Uh, ignite burn faster modifier, which does apply to all ignites inflicted by explosive arrow because explosive arrow is an attack. So an attack skill. It's not possible for them to burn faster modifier. Wait. It is not possible for the burn faster modifier to modify the duration without also modifying the damage to match. Because I asked if that's inconsistent because the duration was getting decreased, but the damage, I wasn't sure if it's getting increased. The damage over time is it getting increased. So I asked on... Well, if it's an attack, then why doesn't Leech work with it? Attack Leech, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because the explosions deal secondary damage, not attack damage. So it's still it's an attack <laughs> skill. Be not weapon damage. But the attack the explosion isn't an attack itself, and we don't deal attack damage. Because the base damage doesn't come from the weapon, the skill explosive arrow is still an attack. The modifier cares about whether the ignite came from an attack, not whether it came from attack damage. And this is why Leech wouldn't work with something like this. <laughs> so, I mean, there's there's a brief uh, brief uh, clusterfuck for you guys as to why a lot of these things don't necessarily make sense. <laughs> it sounds, sounds about on par with all the other wording <laughs> mechanics. 
sounds about right when I th- when I really think about it, you know. It's like... <laughs> I think uh, soon we'll need a degree to play PUE. Someone needs to make a like PUE school. If you don't finish it, you cannot play PUE. You're not allowed to play PUE at all. That's the that's the thing that I always say about path of building that you need to be able to like answer five different questions because so many people misuse path of building. Like mm-hmm. I was watching Destiny's stream, and he was using uh, added fire, and in his chat there was a guy who was really added avid about using added fire on Sunder, and oh, I, you really got to use added fire. Chance to bleed sucks in comparison. It's like you clearly know that this guy just got it from. Path of building, like this shit gives you more damage in path of building. You just put in base numbers. He was just super, super duper avid about it. And I feel like a lot of people do get hurt by something like that because they jump into path of building too early without like truly understanding it. So we should have a quiz of like answer these five questions to unlock this program. And then that <laughs> way people won't get fucked over as much. Wait, I never played Sunder. So why is Added Fire bad for Sunder? Because out of fire sucks, man. It, mobs have resistances and shit, and there's just, like ten other gems that are way better. The real, the real argument, if me and Rai start shouting each other, is do you use conk effect or not? Conk or AOE with Sunder. <laughs> that's the real, the real shouty. Shout. No, that's a very, that's not a shouting match. That's very short. You don't use conk effect if you're a good player, and you use conk effect if you suck. That's pretty <laughs> much it. Because conk effect isn't a bad gem for Sunder. It still gives you more damage than a lot of other supports. It's just that you, if you equip a conk effect and you're not playing well, then if you equip conk effect and you're playing well, then you're lowering your increase speed. But if you're not playing well and you equip conk effect, then you increase your increase speed. See, the thing that I love about this is like I'll argue with Rise about like random Sunder links. I've never once played Sunder because it's a boring as fuck skill, but I'll have to like spend three years going, well actually in 2011, <laughs> Alkaiser once used this gem. Are you saying you're better than Alkaiser, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry to break it to you. Two things there. I've only actually ever played Sun 90 once, and that was a transition to KB. Sorry to break the myth. And two, Alkaiser says that, yeah, he was about that, so... He, he admits that that was, I quote, retarded to say. <laughs> and so, yeah. The sun. Mm. Only to 91. Yeah, undercover dog, because I get to 91 in like 20 minutes, man. Come on. <laughs> I didn't even notice it. It just went through. See, that's the really crazy thing with PoE right now, with like how quickly stuff levels is... If you're actually like doing stuff correctly, it's like you're getting to 90 in like a day, maybe like two days if you're going kind of, if you've got like all the stuff set up. Well, build, build yeah. wise too. Yeah, you gotta get yeah. the right build. Uh, but then it's like at the same time, like I can happily be like super casual dicking about and it's like, oh, I only got to like 90 in like four days of streaming. But like, lol, are you fucking shit? And I'll be like, wow, that's pretty fucking try hard, Taki. That's a pretty quick leveling i feel like modern day poe has gotten so warped with like leveling speeds and stuff mm-hmm. oh yeah because i mean because like the better players are getting faster and faster and there's definitely like just from a, how you play point of view i can definitely tell you that people play a lot better like the top players play a lot better than they used to and so, yeah, the gap between like a newer player and somebody who's been playing for a long time is really big. And then on the other side, like, no matter how good the player is, there are just certain builds that, yeah, if the player is really good, he can level with a build pretty fast, and he will level faster than the guy that doesn't know what he's doing. But if a guy like watches a two-hour act thing Kitava kill video and then he's like oh I'm gonna do the same thing except with Glacial Hammer it's like well (laughs) you're probably not gonna have very good results you might still do really well better than ever Mm. because you watched the video but then yeah you're kind of setting yourself up a little bit wrong but actually to give GGG I think a lot of credit here because this is something that I've always uh, had a big problem with the diversity of leveling abilities currently is so fucking huge. You can level with anything and it just works. And yeah, there are certain abilities that work good if you, you know, don't put that much effort into it, like Sunder, for instance. But like 
if you there are abilities that are equally as good, like Frostblades, for instance, but they're a lot tougher to to play and uh, all that sort of stuff. So I really, I really love the current leveling meta. And there's going to be community races soon, uh, set up by Havoc, and I think we're going to see some really creative stuff from that. So if you guys are interested in leveling, speedrunning, racing, probably tune into that. Yeah, rent, rent over. <laughs> Sorry, for anyone in chat who was really confused, some people in the Discord call might have noticed that my cat was, like, peeping around the green screen. <laughs> you guys couldn't see anything because it's off cam. It's just, like... Yeah. But, um... I, I do want to say as well, like, while the balance is being a bit, like, questionable, I think this is, like, one of the most balanced patches we've had in such a long time. Like, obviously, KB is still, like, ridiculous, but it seems like every nearly everything kind of works and can do something. Would you kind of agree with that? Yeah, except for like Vol Double Strike and uh, Broken Elemental Hit. Those are like the two that stand out to me as just they're really overtuned or they they made a mistake. Um, but everything else seems pretty pretty balanced. Like you can make everything work, and you can bring it to a level that's usable for pretty much all the content that you'd want to do. Bar like Uber Elder, because that's still one of those fights that you need to really plan more than just your skill or your damage round too. But um, yeah, I would agree. But also, this patch killed a lot of meme builds. So, with the new charges, for example, you can, uh, you used to be able to use uh, cluster trap with traps and uh, frost bomb. Now it only throws one frost bomb. Mm -hmm. uh, same goes for. Frost bomb is crazy. Frost bomb's OP as fuck, and they killed it. Dude, frost bomb is legit Dude. the best leveling caster ability. <laughs> no joke. It's actually yeah. pork. It almost feels like uh, GG is trying to kill. Weaker builds that I play. <laughs> <laughs> they have a specific target target for Wolfie. They're just like yeah. refreshing that YouTube sub feed. Like, what we know for next boys. <laughs> that's a, that's a, always a tough thing that they have to deal with. Like, I was actually planning list. another flame dash build with ignites. Flame and, dash. Yeah, flame dash. Okay. Oh, with it like a trap or something? No, no. Yeah, with, with traps it no longer works because yeah. if you throw cluster trap, it consumes all the charges. So that also no longer works. So yeah, yeah. and uh, I, wa I was just looking at the damage on the flame dash. Also, how much can I scale ignite damage and the uh, burning ground damage? So I scaled to 100k burning ground damage and 60k ignite damage. That is with proliferation. So, uh, but that's basically the limit, and I want to play a flame dash build, <laughs> but I can't. Wait, but how were you planning for it to work initially? Traps or? No, self cast. Oh, <laughs> okay, so a big okay, a big Thank part you. of today's you topic, win. and this is what we're going to talk about now, is where do we draw the line on a meme build becoming a shit build? And I feel like we all have slightly different standards on where that falls. So at what point does something like stop becoming like a silly idea and just become like unplayable? Wolfie, from your point of view. Well, for me, that's why I like PoE at the first place. Because you can take almost anything and make it, uh, well, not necessarily viable in the endgame, but at least work until like lower tier maps and uh, have some sort of fun but uh, i don't know for me the more options the better i i really don't think there is a limit right it's like whatever you enjoy to play and you've got that possibility just play it and if somebody tells you it sucks they yes. suck just don't listen buff, to them flame dash yeah, flame dash needs the buff and remove the charges. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, would it even hurt, like, serious talk? Would it even hurt if they removed the charges for Flame Dash now? Fuck no. Bad, and like... anyone who tells you otherwise is in denial and needs to be slapped. Like, <laughs> legit. I fucking... We've had this discussion so many times, there's always that one dip shit. It's like, Actually, it scales better than any other movement skill with no investment. If they remove the charges, it'd be so... It's like, fuck off. Just go away. Fuck. <laughs> I mean, I think it's a lot of because, like, I've heard that argument from people coming over from Diablo three, where they're like, they think everything should have charges, 
like all the movement abilities should have charges and that seems pretty yeah it seems like a big deal but then again i've i haven't really seen like anybody like truly like any of the d3 people to truly truly zoom zoom i said empyrean but i don't really know his opinion about it so so i normally don't like shield charge and willing blades because you cannot go over the cliffs and uh, invisible rocks i always get stuck behind those so usually i like using flame dash but uh, the charges really kills the fun and uh, what is our option um lighting warp is too slow and uh, charge dash people laugh if you use it <laughs> so... well i did hear that charge dash is like the caster thing to use now to get around obstacles yeah but it is slow slower than flame dash so why even use it I heard it's somehow faster, but I mean, it's dependent on your movements. It's, yeah, it's only yeah, good it is if fast. You have I was a using it. Flask, yeah, because it doesn't care about your attack speed; it just cares about your movement speed. Then it gives but you like wait. a thirty or sixty percent more multiplier to your movement speed or something. But if so. you are using move, uh, movement flask, then why even have the movement ability? Uh, yeah, it's edges. only to to get over edges, but it does give a more multiplier to it. It's just that you have to channel it, basically. Yeah. I'm not a big fail. I wasn't a big fan of even when I used it in my build, I wasn't a big fan of using it in between packs because I could just leap slam faster and then get a fortify. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's really sad. <laughs> the one guy who balanced yeah. it at GGJ is just crying. <laughs> no. I, I do want to say phase run is amazing. I love phase run. Uh, I love phase run before this patch, and this patch made phase run twice as good because they literally cut the uh, cast time in half. Phase okay, so I open. tried using phase run and my, my issue was that I cast it and I immediately start casting something else and mm -hmm. then I lose it. You gotta well, that that means you're not it. using it correctly. Yeah. But, <laughs> but the facts is... Mm, I have this ability that when I use another ability, I lose the movement speed. So what I do is I press the ability that I press fireball. That's not how you use it. The way but that you the, use But the enemies are so tightly packed. So... <laughs> So me and Rise have done a lot, me and Rise have done a lot of like phase phase run means. It's something that honestly the more you play with it you get into this like natural rhythm. So it's kind of like so a, a really good example is back when like race course was like the go-to thing, right? So back when like race course was a super meta map, you come out of the portal, you press phase run and you have to move quite far to hit the first pack. You kill the first two packs, phase run again through the door. Phase run to the next pack, kill a few packs, phase run. And it's like you're doing it like every couple of bits. Or like if you're in an underground scene, you've got to go back around the corner. You then phase run, whip back around that way. And um, then you want to shoot one enemy that you missed. Well, you don't, well, one, don't miss mobs. But two, you then just <laughs> tap it. And then ah, you, you, you yeah. fucked yourself over. You said shoot, which indicates that you have a Mirage Archer. So he <laughs> takes care of that. <laughs> I can just imagine, like, with that logic of, like, well, I use another ability and my phase run goes away, this shit doesn't work. I can just, like, imagine the Diablo 3 guy coming over and, like, playing Flame Blast but targeting away from mobs, and he's like, these mobs aren't dying. It's like, yeah, you're fucking not using the ability correctly, man. Of course it doesn't work. That's, like, phase run is the one thing that makes me really want to play a bow guy right now. And I, the only bow guy I played this league was Explosive Arrow, which doesn't use Mirage Archer. But, like, if you can just get that Mirage Archer and then you pop a phase run, whew, it actually makes, I feel like that really does make uh, anything other than, like, Queen of the Forest or Deadeye, two-second blink arrow cooldown, feel good. Like, you can actually play bows with, like, other classes now, and you, you're not so locked into it just because phase run feels good so something to look forward to for me you kicked uh, the cat out Tarki. come on dude man. i don't know what okay so i adopted this cat like two months ago she's lovely she loves me hates everyone else it's fucking amazing um and she's been fine normally what she does is she sleeps on my bed and she can like watch me through the green screen today she's like lost that concept of like oh this is a thing and the whole time she's just been like banging against it and i've just been like watching it rippling in the background no, and that yeah. makes sense because this is a podcast so you're talking a lot and 
you know, she's jealous. But normally when you're streaming, I just see you sitting there and watching videos the whole day or sitting yeah, silently and looking at right. half of building. <laughs> so she doesn't have yeah, the same yeah, sort of yeah, reaction. That, that makes sense. To be fair, though, she proper kicked off when Wolf first started talking about phase runs. I, I feel like she was mostly just annoyed about the phase run you said. Um, one of the things which I actually find uh, like super underrated about phase run, especially since a lot of people are playing trappers now, is it's a way to proc Arcane Surge. And there are actually quite a lot of builds which struggle to proc Arcane Surge. Because it's like, traps don't trigger it, totems don't trigger it. So on builds like that, it like not only does it give you a reliable movement thing, it's giving you mana sustain, it's giving you more multi as well. Um, and yeah, it's really good. And also put Enhance on it. No one puts Enhance on Phase Run, and it's like, Enhance gives you more movement speed. So yeah. Why does Arcane Surge work? It's considered, Phase Run is a spell? Shh! It works. It's yeah. a spell. Shh. It's because you cast it. Yeah. It's kind of like Blood Rage, and that's why like Rithgul's Pelt ruins so many builds because <laughs> it just it disables like half the the buffs you use even as an attack build. It's weird. Oh, maybe you guys have something too. I didn't talk about this with anybody. I was I killed Brutus. I was leveling a new character. I killed Brutus, and it dropped the Gluttony belt, the forty level forty eight belt. Is that? Am I like missing something? Is that supposed to happen? That doesn't sound right. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Like just normal Brutus. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. There's like a clip mm. of it and everything. I'm like, did they miss or? Yeah, that sounds like a weird bug. I don't know. There, there's been a few like weird things like that where like you get this random item which just kind of seems to ignore things. Yeah. But um, so it's to a spell. yeah to backtrack a little bit, so. When someone comes up to you and says, Hi, I, I'm planning this really cool um, Ice Spear, Poison, Totem, Cast when Channeling, Charge Dash build. Like, how do you try and, like, promote people to play what they want to play? Not just, like, KB, but at the same time say, Dude, that shit, play something slightly less shit, you know? Mm. I mean, just I always... Play. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. I always try to judge things by its coolness and not its power. I mean, unless we're talking like racing or something like that, then for the most part for me, yeah. I try to judge skills by their feel. That's why I sometimes have issues with just skills that function the exact same way as something else. Like, for instance, Power Siphon and Kinetic Blast. It's like literally the exact same thing. It probably feels slightly different, but you scale it the exact same way. You do everything the exact same way, and then, yeah. That, that's the sort of stuff that I have a problem with, because one is just a stronger version of the other without really changing how it works mechanically and, like, the feel of it. But maybe it does change the feel of it a little bit more. So, just as an example. But overall, support people in playing whatever the fuck they want. Whatever league they want and whatever... Uh, build they want to play i think that's the coolness and oftentimes people come up with like really cool shit based off of some like absolute meme mm -hmm. so and then we come back it. and then we come back and show you uh, where build and tell you how can i improve this build and then you look at it and oh no i don't <laughs> want to do this uh, that's the biggest pain like when i'm doing before leagues i'll generally do build help sessions where i'll just have people queue in builds and there'll be a lot of them that are legitimate and other ones that are not legitimate or they're people that are just trying to think of the craziest things they can do i'm like dude this is a league starter why do you got like zoff's blood on there like what are you doing <laughs> um and they'll just have ridiculous items and setups and it'll be i'll just look at it and then i'll close it and then just highlight it and say don't do this <laughs> um but yeah i mean I like to do a lot of, I like to think about doing a lot of weird builds, but mostly what comes down to me is the issue is, is uh, I'll end up coming up with these ideas, but then it'll be really clunky to play or it'll require like a, a specific engagement of skills. And it'll be, as soon as you get into like a chimera fight or like any fight that's fast moving, you're like, oh, I'm panicking, I'm panicking. You're just hitting all the buttons and then you get completely messed up. So usually I try and bring it down to be more simplistic and that ends up meaning cutting out a lot of the meme portions of it. But, yeah. You know, like the one thing which keeps limiting me, because, so when I first started playing Pee-wee, the main thing that really attracted to me was kind of like the Wolfio style, what's like the craziest thing I can come up with this one unique. Whereas these days, it's kind of like, 
how can I play like a tier two, tier three build and then come up with cool like utility setups? But I keep finding myself limited just by the lack of action bars. There are so many really cool like small utility things like rallying cries or like abyssal cry to proc onslaught. There are also like really small cool things you can do. It's like I just don't have enough binds to actually do them, especially with the Vol skill rework as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now we got Vol skills. It's like you could have a lot of Vol skills running at the same time if you wanted, and your key binds fill up very quickly. But then on top of that, it's like now now it's becoming like an, an MMO where you get. The full action bar setups. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, the attack in place helped a little bit with certain abilities because you can slap them on your movement ability like golems. Mm -hmm. But it's still... Yeah, it's bad. That's definitely been a complaint of mine for a while now. I really wish they would look at it. Like, for instance, I would use phase run on my explosive arrow build, but I can't. I don't have the key bindings for it. That's it. Mm. But, um, so one thing though, so when it comes to like, okay, you've seen someone, they send you a bit of a wonky build, you know, it's really going to be a fun thing. Do you sometimes worry, especially when it comes to newer players, that it's going to be less enjoyable with them when it comes to interacting with the new league? With this league especially, I've, uh, you know, there have been so many complaints that, you know, you just can't play this kind of build, you know, with Incursion. Have you, you guys experienced that at all? Uh, yeah, people were talking to me about it the other night in the stream because uh, a couple of people were asking me my thoughts on the league, and they were telling me um, it kind of hurts those those lower tier builds that can't do fast clear speed um, and complete things or do, like worry about single target while they're doing fast clear speed and stuff like that. And I definitely think that's an issue, but it also gives the person something to work for. Uh, it gives them something to um, expand their build into um, and try and realize how to either min max it or push their build somewhere where they were taking maybe in the wrong direction. Um, of course, that's not going to be for everybody because some people just want to play like a deliberately slow build or they have mechanics such that it can't expand into that. So it does suck for that, but you can never please everybody. And that's the problem. Um, but I think it does. It was kind of the same problem with Breach because that. When everybody saw Breach, like, oh, great, it's just a DPS race. But in the end, it was it turned out to be you didn't really need that much DPS. Um, you were able to do everything a huge DPS build could do with a, a mediocre DPS build. Um, and just figuring out what the tricks are to it and how you can get the most out of what you have. And I think that's more interesting to me than just being, I put X skill on here and I can complete all the content like that. So it gives you gives you more ideas. See, that's the thing. I uh, I I've gained a lot of respect for GDG, this league, because they basically did the thing that I never wanted them to do in terms of balancing that we were talking about earlier, which is make everything broken and then nothing is broken. And to me, that was always like, well, then you have to downscale by like increasing how much the mobs fight and whatnot. But no, the game is completely fine. There are certain things where it's gotten to the point where abilities are so freaking fast and builds are so freaking fast that you're limited mechanically even mm -hmm. to that point and i don't think that's great but overall it i mean it works so much better than i anticipated and there's the other thing that i was also wrong about because i always thought that if ggg were to take the approach of like white blue and yellow mobs but with content where you would have like easy content would be regular mapping and then uh, blue content would be doing an incursion and then yellow content, right? Like the yellow mobs, rare mobs would be like killing an Aziri or a boss or something like that. And I always thought that that would work really well. And it does seem like they basically did that now where you do feel like there's a big gap between regular mapping and then going into an incursion or going into a tempo. And it doesn't mm -hmm. feel good. It just somehow doesn't feel good. I like a challenge and it just somehow doesn't feel good. And I don't know how to how to adapt it. Like that's definitely been a pretty big problem. And yeah, that definitely limits certain builds because that feeling of like this doesn't feel good is just that much stronger if your build actually barely makes it through maps already. Mm -hmm. It's basically just kind of like not really hard gates to content, but um, like you're not gated by RNG for getting fragments or anything like that. You're just you're gated solely by the power of your build or your mechanical play style. And that can make it tough for 
a wide range of people, but there's not, I, I can't personally think of a, like a good solution to it at the moment. And I think it's sort of just the way a lot of games work where there's content that some people will get to like in MMOs and things like that. People will get to the high end rating content where other people won't, but then like wow, one ahead with the route where they have like, uh, looking for raid where that you can get into see that content, but it's not the highest tier of content. Then you end up having a bunch of difficulty levels, which I don't want them to add to, to path of exile. Cause then that would just become even more confusing and they kind of already had that with like the difficulties through the play stories and stuff like that. So, well, maybe the thing is it's so apparent because incursions and temple happen so frequently. So you feel like you're constantly hitting this almost wall that you have to mm-hmm. dig through. When it, if it wouldn't be so much, then it wouldn't be that big of a deal. And I mean, you're not. It's not forced on you the same way breach wasn't. And breach was challenging too. And yet. Breach felt somehow better to me in terms of uh, this is hard and really rewarding, which I think incursions are very well balanced around something like that. Mm-hmm. Yet they don't have that same feeling of like, I just want to jump into this and have fun. It kind of feels like a, like a chore at this point. By the way, what do you think about uh, duration of uh, incursions? Is it well balanced or should it be longer duration? I like Bigger. duration. I don't know if I like the tempo. I, I like incursions. I don't know if I. But let's like say so. Weaker builds usually uh, have a difficult time clearing the incursions, right? So, and stronger builds uh, don't don't care about the timer, because we just clear everything fast and go out. So if we increase the duration, it would allow a bit slower builds to, oh. I guess, uh, progress a bit more. <laughs> I forgot about the actual timer. You're talking yeah. about the timer. Yeah. I'm like, duration. I mean, I thought you meant like how long, how big oh. the, the incursion itself is. Oh, okay. See, that's the thing, right? So the duration is almost pointless because once your build starts functioning clearly enough, you yeah. know, be it like, you know, you get the four link or whatever, like the second your build starts to activate, most builds completely ignore the timer. Um, and then we have the thing where you have, okay, well now it's locking out some builds completely. So if you make the timer any longer, then it's just even more insignificant for the people whose builds are functioning well. And then it will still lock out some people because it will always still be locking out someone. So do you just remove the timer? like? Yeah, but like... Does the lockout feel good? Is the question because that's that was about that was the thing about breaches, right? That the breach was essentially on a timer, right? Because the more you killed, the bigger it would open. So you had this feeling of pressure I have to kill as much as possible, therefore, I will get even more out of it. But with incursions, you, you don't really feel threatened. And I wonder if a player who does have like a weaker build and who can't manage it over and over, if that actually feels good that they are not opening it, It's rooms. kind of the opposite, though, because it's like, with Breach, the better your build is, the more stuff you kill, the longer the Breach lasts. So mm-hmm. you're feeling a direct sense of, my build is good, I'm getting more mobs, I'm getting more loot. Whereas yeah. if your build is good, it's, I've got 30 seconds remaining, I'm now clicking out of the portal. So it, it's, it's actually like quite a different kind of balance to it. Yeah. Um, whereas if your build is bad in a breach or you just get like a bad, like if your build is struggling in a breach, it's a, I am fighting for survival. Oh fuck. Thank God I survived that. Okay. It wasn't that rewarding or the, you just get the dud breach, which just like opens into wall and closes. Um, yeah. whereas in incursion, if the incursion does go well for you, it's like, fuck, I didn't get the upgrade key or I didn't unlock the door. Then they can't unlock the door. They don't get to connect to their temple. And then they're like, this temple feels really unrewarding because I only got to do two of these rooms. So it kind of makes this like self-perpetuating cycle where if you're getting locked out of incursions early, then you're you're either someone who's either new to Path of Exile or plays very meme setups. If you're mm-hmm. someone who plays very meme setups and then you're being locked out of the new league mechanic, you'll probably think, I don't like this league. You'll probably stop playing sooner. And then if you're a completely new player and you're like, oh, well, this isn't fun, then it's not it's not looping them into the cycle. So I'm not sure if it... it's targeting a different. I feel like it's targeting a different audience. 
Because, like, for instance, if you level with incursions, there's just not enough mobs for it to... Like, it's pretty hard to complete incursions when you're leveling. And I feel like there, it works pretty good because you do feel, like, a sense of urgency. But, yeah, once you get to the end game, uh, that kind of goes away. And, I mean, a lot of people leveling up also play subpar builds because they're just trying to get to their to their setup. So, yeah, may, that is a good point. I think maybe if they would move around the duration a little bit more, then it would feel better. Because it does seem like a decent balance when leveling up. Where, yeah, you do feel shitty if you fuck up. I don't you, know. If you well, leveling up, I kind of would prefer to complete more of incursions, but I usually fail because uh, either I'm under geared or playing well, slower builds. So I would prefer it to be longer. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I I typically level with pretty strong builds, and I found myself skipping incursions even because yeah. I just couldn't complete them properly. So I was like, "Well, there's mobs, but I get over level, so that's not really worth it." And I'm trying to like min max my shit, and, and there, even if I if, do it, I I'll fail. Yeah, and there's nothing too special that you can get from the incursions at low levels, because all the items will be low item level, and you're gonna get a shitty uniques, which you're gonna sell right away. So you yeah, just skip it mostly. Yeah. Uh, one thing I can think of, but I can't think of how it would fix a certain problem, but um, if you're doing them sort of like Breach, where you, you can spend as much time in them as you want, uh, and you go in, you kill the monsters, you kill the boss, but the re- amount of reward is scaled against the amount of time you took to complete it, um, and then that would let you that would let you kill everything, and that would let you choose the boss you want to kill, and then unlock the room you want to unlock, and maybe... I, this, the only problem with this is like it would it would change the loot that you get from the incursion, so it would directly affect how much loot you get. You don't fail it, but you just don't get as much loot if you're not clearing it as fast. Um, and then the problem would be that everybody that did an incursion would always complete it and would always upgrade it. Um, I don't know how to fix that problem with that strategy, but it would fix the uh, just the generic how the incursion feels, and you're not getting you're not going in and then having trouble finding like the first pack and then your duration ends and then you're like that was that was really lackluster because i've had that problem in high tier maps where your duration is very small to begin with you walk and then there are no monsters around you, you got to walk through like a couple rooms and you're like oh here's the first pack and you kill it and you're like i have three seconds now and you got to try and run to find the boss and then other rooms you walk in and then everybody's just getting blasted by chaos spitters and there's so many around you it's just very sometimes it's, it's weird how the mobs spawn with the tight timer on those like tier 14 15 16 maps um, but that's a that's a very interesting point because I think incursions feel good. I think temple doesn't feel so good. Like once you've done enough temple, it just doesn't temp- feel so good. Yeah, and the you temple just is get another. It. Before the, we get into the, time... the whole temple thing, okay. though, I feel like that's a. I I I really like the idea of the solution of, yeah, you have the opportunity to finish it past failing the timer, but you just get less rewards. Because if I think about mm-hmm. like other games which do similar things, this is the uh, Taki compares this game to WoW for a second. Anyone who played Mythic Plus and Legion, you know, if your group, you know, wipes a few times and you fail the timer, you still get some loot at the end. You don't get to upgrade your key, but you still get something yeah. at the end. You don't get kicked out of the content. So, mm-hmm. yeah, if you're someone who's like, for whatever reason, you either got like bad layout RNG or, you know, you didn't get the right build or whatever, you still get to experience the league rather than locking the players out of it, but it still rewards the players who can do it properly. That's what I yeah. was going to say. If you guys have ever like not killed an architect, like yeah. the incursion doesn't really drop a whole lot of shit. Like the architect is a, he's got a lot of stuff on him. So maybe mm-hmm. the timer shouldn't be uh, when it kicks you out of the incursion, but instead when the architect leaves, for instance. What if it um, wasn't based on doors. timer? What if it wasn't based on timer, but it would be sort of like rampage? You have no timer, but uh, you have uh, like a rampage. Uh, the more you kill, the faster you kill, the more loot you get. And uh, if the special rampage kind of ends, uh, then you you can still finish it, but you don't get an extra rewards. Yeah, that's good. If they manage to balance balance the instances so that it is not like it is now, like somebody mentioned before, where currently you just enter and there's nothing, or you enter and you're just swarmed yeah. by everything. Yeah. That's a tough thing to balance because you've got like pack size, map mods, and whatnot to take into account. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if they can manage to make it so that an incursion actually, because I don't feel like incursions, other than difficulty, I don't feel like they actually get impacted by map mods, like in terms of 
how the feeling of it is. Like if you ever run uh, a map with like triple pack size sextants and it's got like 30 pack size, like you feel that that map is different. But with an mm -hmm. incursion, no matter what map I enter, it's just a matter of, oh, does it have uh, map mod, like damage mods? Oh, it doesn't. Okay, this is like the next thing. So. The worst hindrance I found is like you get, like you're doing elemental build like on the charge dash and you have elemental equilibrium, monster resistance and monster life. You're not going to kill the boss unless you gem swap and you can't gem swap underneath that time pressure. Um, and killing the monsters even in there, like especially if you get bloodlines and they have like union of souls and then the monsters are just huge and you can't kill them fast enough because you're spending a bunch of time killing a blue pack because they have so much life and resistance already. I think incursion monsters have insane base life as they already are and you put a multiplier on that and it just gets out of control. And that's what happened like that. uh, for my uh, burning arrow. When yeah. I tried to go going to high tier maps, I just couldn't couldn't kill enemies fast enough. Mm -hmm. I feel that, well, if you can yeah, I feel like that's kind of cool where no matter what you'll still fail every now and then cuz that's just what PoE is. Like you can be the best player and you'll still die or you'll still have bad luck in this or this can go wrong. A lot of things can go right. Obviously, the better you are, the higher the chance of you doing well but mm -hmm. like you can still get fucked over so i kind of i kind of like that but uh, i can see how if you're already struggling and then that like is in a way enforced onto you it doesn't feel so good i i think one of the biggest issues as well is like the actual layouts themselves um so like some of them are just like so there's the one where you spawn in the middle and then there's the like open stairway on like either side so like on my fireball build if I have a fall fireball pre-charged into it, if I press that, I instantly clear the entire cursion without moving yep. from that one step. No problem. Like, don't give a fuck. But, you know, that's one of the other things which really lock out some of the other builds as well. Because if you're playing, like, a projectile-based build, they're like, most of the incursion arts, you just instantly, boom, let's go. Let's say you're playing fucking Spark, for an example. It's like, oh, shit, my build's fucked. Or, like, you're playing Freezing Pulse, and there are doors everywhere. It's like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. nice fucking build, Amy. So I, I feel know. like that, that's another thing which really locks I out. I know what to do. Oh, so on, the, the incursion boss, right, gets locked out when the timer ends. But you get the extra fun because even if you did badly, right, technically you didn't kill the, the architect. So technically you did badly and technically you failed your incursion, but you can still clear the rest of it once the timer is done, right? But this incursion guy now has PTSD. And he's been fucking, he's been roiding it up. He's been, you know, pumping it up. And now when you go to the temple, it's like, oh, that's the room that I failed. This guy is like really buffed up because he's been preparing for me for like years. <laughs> and he's going to be like really roided up. So you can either make the decision to avoid him or take the risk to kill him and instead get like double the loot or something. Like so basically like the nemesis system from Shadow of War, wherever the fuck that game was. Where like oh I don't know what that is. So that was like before it went full meme with the loot boxes. It was the Lord of the Rings game. If you died to any of the enemy orcs, he then like goes on an ego trip and becomes more powerful, and then you get like a bonus mm. for killing him later. And then every time you die to that guy, he gets more and more buff. So you're kind of saying you'd want that for the architect. So if you failed the room, that guy's like, yeah, I completely wrecked that Templar like ten million years ago. I'm kind of a big deal. So now he's got like a ramping modifier. <laughs> now that sounds kind yeah, of cool yeah. to be fair. So it would encourage failing? Yeah, maybe if they like over rewarded it, <laughs> it too would... much or something. Like you personally like well, I don't know. It would still have to be that the incursion is more satisfactory. But like at the same time, like if this guy's really, really buffed up and you've got a really strong build, then you can take the time to kill him. But if you know that you won't be able to kill this this dude, right, who's been lifting for ten thousand years. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Then... Even going past him in a room, right? This would encourage to open mm -hmm. more rooms. This would encourage to open your rooms more strategically because you know that if your only opening is to go past that dude and you know that he's really going to fuck your shit up, like you don't want to be doing that. So that in itself could be a reward too if this guy's going to be chasing you down, right? That's all, I can cool. picture, all I can picture is a room full of like, he has the room and it's just full of posters of you with like the eyes cut out <laughs> and the over your face. <laughs> just sitting there yeah, man. <laughs> Dude, that sounds fucking legit as fuck. <laughs> it's just like, you just get like the montage from the opening of like Con Air. You're just the guy just fucking like going. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> you He's enter, you get, ready, a mate. you get a montage. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, before we go into talking about like if the temple feels shit or not, um, do you guys feel like each league has been getting like progressively more punishing? Like it's been getting like progress. I think it's a really good thing because I want the game to like get scarier and scarier. And it seems like the mobs keep getting stronger and stronger. But I vividly remember one of your videos, Wolfio, because you fucking hated Harbi League. Like, I remember you just like, every time, I hate these shitty blue monsters, they take so long. Like, have you felt that, like, with each league, like, it's getting more frustrating, or...? No. Okay. Just the Harbinger. <laughs> <laughs> Odd one out of the bunch. Well, Abyss was also kind of annoying. Especially at the start, when uh, when those bats got the region. Oh, Abyss, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, yeah, it feels like they've been testing the system of, like, okay, we're not going to, like, buff the core game, but we'll make each league, like, spoopier. So, like, with Harbi, they were like, maybe if we did, like, this slower fight, then with Abyss, we had the, like, fucking big spinny boys and the bats, which are, like, a lot scarier than most other rares you encounter. And then with Best Ray, obviously, we had, like, the big red beast, and, like, you get the big red beast and a poor joys, so you just, like, insta one shot to you. And now with Encourage, they, like, they've gone up again. Um... Do we like that idea? I personally, I, I'm really into it. Um, I like it. Same. But then again, we keep buffing all the damage, so... I mean, eventually, yeah. it's it's always going to be like that, right? As the game grows and as there's more combinations. No matter what, even if GGG wouldn't, like, increase the strength of things directly like individual abilities and whatnot. Remember when we bu uh, buffed the uh, boss life? Mm -hmm. uh, we gave damage, everyone yay damage and then boss life. So you need uh, you have the damage but also it takes the same time to kill the boss. Well but now you technically have to build up damage to have like more you have like overkill damage almost for everything else right? Just to be yeah. able to deal with the boss. Yeah. So I kinda, the main I kinda, weird like thing it. with like bosses, in my opinion, is it's just so the way everything ba is balanced is so fucked. So it's kind of like you kind of want to be purposely like running like triple boss maps, for example, because if you're running triple boss maps, you're in the most boss loot. The bosses themselves are less scary because their like health total is split among three, and then you also get like the special essence div card and stuff. Um, so it's kind of like the way they've done it is a bit awkward, and it's just like. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I like how we had three topics on the list or something, and then <laughs> it's been two hours, and we didn't even get to like the biggest one. Well, I mean, I'm 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 setting it up, Rise. We're getting there. So, temple <laughs> balance, by the way. Uh -huh. uh, apparently, you think it's dog shit. Please explain why you think it's dog shit, Mister Rise QT. Oh, I think it's dog shit. I don't necessarily think it's dog shit. It's just that, um, well, I feel like the connections between the rooms are not impactful enough, first of all. Second, I feel like certain rooms most certainly stand out for all the right reasons, which is fun. And uh, you kind of aim towards like those specifically. They also said that they're going to be adding more rooms. I know it's pretty early, but we haven't really heard much news about that. Uh, and overall, it's not even that temples feel bad. It's just that incursions feel better. And it's not nearly as much of a commitment, even though an incursion is kind of a commitment. If it's in every map, then it's like xp wise it's like one third of a map and you've got a lot of drops so time wise it's still a pretty big commitment but then temple is like a really big commitment and i feel like currently that is kind of an issue but at the same time eventually if like alva has a 20 percent chance to spawn in a map for you that'll feel real freaking good like really freaking good to eventually run that temple like every couple levels so, I don't think it's necessarily a problem. It's just a problem kind of right now where a lot of people are skipping rooms or going directly to a single room and then leaving and whatnot. Although in SSF, it feels great. But again, don't balance the game around SSF. Because in SSF, it's like, oh, how do you sustain T16 maps? 
this guy told me not to run tempo. It's like, well, you run tempo, you sustain T16s. <laughs> like, shit. Do you think it's kind of weird how Temple is both too long and too short at the same time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's really weird. It's such a weird thing. Because it's kind of like, depending on the layout you get, it's like, okay, I will literally just do these two rooms. That's it. Feels okay. Bit bit anticlimactic, but whatever. And then it's like, oh, I've got the layout where I need to do every single room, or I'm doing like a higher tier Temple, so I want to full clear it for the map sustain. And it, it, it's really weird in how you like flow. Like, that was another thing is, so I've started rolling all of my maps in batches of 11. And since I've done that, it feels okay. Before I was doing that, I was also finding it was like, it was really killing, like, your momentum while mapping. And that was kind mm -hmm. of one of the weird things about the league is, yeah. It's, it takes a lot of adapting to you when it comes to, like, getting into the natural pace of things. Well, I know, what I do, would, you do you think? Just, just real quick, I would really like to hear from GGG, what was their intent for Temple in terms of whether it should be fully cleared or how you should how should, you should really approach it. I think that would be very interesting if they wanted players to go full clear or if they wanted players to like target very specific rooms. So now you need a guide how to play the incursion? Should you, <laughs> should you clear everything or should you just go straight to what you want? I mean, it would be a guide like any other in Path of Exile, which is do it the way is most effective for your character and build and your playstyle. <laughs> so it's personal. What is the most I effective guess. thing for the league you're playing, the build you're playing? But at the end of the day, just do what you enjoy, homie. So yeah, basically meaningless. <laughs> it's the unfortunate part of it. But I mean, well, that's also the feeling of exploration, I feel, is really cool. Because it does have a feeling of exploration that we've never had. It just gets repetitive right now because there's so much of it. But we've really never had that. Oh, I guess I do have a big problem with Temple. But that's also a problem with Incursions, which is kind of okay. Which is like how it, uh, it basically... So they didn't really balance the league. They just added a whole lot of shit. But then at the same time, they've added such a major mechanic that in a way uh, makes it so that you won't be playing certain builds. Because like you're not going to be playing a summoner in, in incursions and temples. It's just a fucking nightmare, no? Yeah, I you... played summoner. <laughs> How I was it? Did you enjoy it? it? Yeah. Uh, until certain <laughs> maps. But okay. then it kind of... But then again, I was playing some kind of wonky SRS build. Uh, but I don't know. You know the helmet that uh, refreshes SRS duration? Sure. Uh, so I wanted to see if I could just summon five SRS and just stand still and let uh, those SRS clear all the incursion. They yeah, it does work. Oh, it works? Yeah, Don't as, long, as long as doors are away? open. Yeah, they, they just keep moving. Um, About two screens away. Mm. If we move too far, we just disappear. Mm. Mm. But uh, in the higher tier maps, uh, it wasn't... I mean, their damage was enough, but it's just too many enemies attacking you, and you couldn't just chill, chill back and uh, wait. Yeah, but that's just SRS, right? And SRS is like the best type of summoner to have for something like this, or like skellies. But if you're playing like yeah. zombies or specters, which are the more dominant uh, summoners, it's like getting from room to room. Also, as soon as you enter, everyone attacks you, even if you yeah. didn't move. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I've been really enjoying. People are always like, Rise, why do you hate golems? Fucking golems are so good. Where is your golem, Rise? And then I get those clips where they just enter the thing and they're like, oh, I'm surrounded by a lot of mobs. I got to move fast. And they don't think that they've got the thing. But then there's the golem. So the mobs are already like half shooting and they just instantly die. I'm just like, hey. Feels good, man. That's I've, I've been saying this for so many leagues. Like, I've got a few videos of like why I hate golems and Tarka, you're so stupid. They give so much attacks. I'm like, yeah, if you play softcore, it's fine. If you play hardcore, they'll just eventually get you killed. No, it's bullshit. Da, 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 da. I'm like, well, you see this one time that I was killing Shaper and I was getting screwed up because he was attacking my golem instead of me. No, it's bullshit, Tarka. You're really bad. Uh... And then finally, <laughs> this league, I'm like, yes. They finally <laughs> believe me. Eight years later. <laughs> I always say that if you if you've been using a golem and you haven't died to your golem like absolutely PKing you, you just haven't played long enough. Like that shit, that shit will eventually always get you. Apparently, I was muted for all of that. Pokemon. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, ch- <laughs> uh, ch- I was basically reading about golems. Um, Pog champ. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, it's so much funnier from yeah, our perspective because yeah. he was making a voice and everything and playing it up for you guys, but then he was still muted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, okay, I'm in the hostel on Monday. I'm dying. You, you have to excuse it. But anyway, so... <laughs> We've agreed that the temple itself feels kind of all over the place. We've agreed that incursions feel kind of all over the place. Mr. Beyblade Bossman. Do, does anyone like Mr. Beyblade Bossman? I, I, like, I like being able to get to him every time I do a temple in the hopes that he drops me something good, but that never happens. Um, and I think this was discussed in your last podcast where you don't actually influence the mods that he drops based on the rooms you have. Um, so it gives you no option to customize him. It's just you get to him and you kill him. Hopefully, he drops you something. And then the other issue is that he has a lot of he has a lot of um, telegraphed attacks, a lot of non-telegraphed attacks, and they all occur like at the same time. And uh, when you're a melee build, or even if you're not and you're just passing by him, you just get nuked. Sometimes you can't see what it is. You just get nuked, and it's it's like it, it's very questionable uh, depending on what you're doing, and it just it doesn't feel very consistent. Um, Wolf has had enough of your shit engineering. He's just yeah. like, <laughs> that's the one thing he loves about incursions. How dare you? <laughs> I'll the... have you know that whispering ice traps fucking destroy that <laughs> boss. How dare you? How dare you question? But um, it, it's really weird. Like, obviously, we always have something to complain about, but this has still been my favorite league in such a long time. Do you guys, are you still enjoying the league or is it kind of like worn off on you? I've I've really been liking it because. Most, pretty much every league, what I do is I play a character for about a week and then I reset, play another character because I just I'm making builds and that's just how I end up playing the game. Um, but it's actually a lot more enjoyable now to play in maps in like mid to high tiers because you get I chase elder around and I do elder, then I have an incursion temple that I got to do, then I go back and chase elder and and during that I'm doing maps. It feels like I'm doing a pretty good rotation, and it goes back to what I've said on stream a couple of times when they started like in Talisman League even though it was a shitty boss, a very shitty mechanic to make the boss and all that stuff, it was something that you could do outside of just doing the same maps over and over. I really wanted to see them add more content like that, and they didn't really do it for a very long time until they started adding like the Breach domains, and um, now we have the Incursion stuff, we have Elder. It's a lot more um, extra content that you can do that's not the exact same thing over and over. Um, and at least if you're doing the same thing over and over, you have other options in there. So I've been liking it a lot um, just doing... You know the mapping stuff that's the biggest thing energy. for me too it's even though it's like too much and you feel stupid if you don't do incursions it just breaks up the gameplay so nicely like mm-hmm. it really because that was my biggest concern it's like well mapping's great but you know i've been playing for a while and mapping kind of gets boring eventually so like something to break it up without having to like delve especially on hardcore without having to like delve into like a super boss killer it's like well I have to roll a boss killer if I'm going to be farming this. I could like just have a one-off and like kill Elder on this build that I'm trying to map with, but for the most part, it's not really efficient. And this is like something that you can always jump into. Nothing's mm-hmm. forcing it on you, and you're still going to feel rewarded. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I feel like once you get over the initial like momentum breaks, once you get used to that pattern, it's really good for just giving that oh, I'll just log in quickly for 40 minutes and I have a purpose. I will get to my temple. I will then do the temple. It, it's very yeah. good for getting players stuck into the loop once they get into the natural panel of it. Um, Wolfie, yeah, we were just chatting about, like, now that we've just spent ages bitching about incursion, you know, are we still enjoying it? Like, what's... Are you still feeling yay or nay on the league? Like, I don't know. About the incursion? Yay. <laughs> very yay. Except I don't really like running temples. Uh, incursions, fun. Uh, they last like 30 seconds and you're done. You get a loot and you're done. But then I open the temple map and I think, oh no, do I need to plan this, then waste another 20 minutes running the temple, or should I just go straight to the boss and get no loot, and uh, <laughs> uh, or just go delete one of my uniques, or should I just go um, corrupt something, or sacrifice unique, uh, and uh, I don't know. I don't really like the temple. <laughs> one thing I would be really interested about, and I feel like it's really the one thing which annoys me a little bit about Temple, and obviously this is this is more of an SSF than a Trade League problem, because in Trade League, 
you can afford to have the super strict filter where you're picking like two things and that's it. But like when you're like more likely to hoard things, I feel like a more casual filter is probably what most people are using. Is you can get that annoying thing in the temple where you've kind of like you've cleared when you get the big temple, you're having to like go back and do like two or three stash runs, and that kind of sucks. Mm. How would you feel if they shifted way more of the loot to be boom explosion at the end? So that it was then like you then did all of your loot running then rather than because I've had so the, the, the it, it thing, mimics oh, like the it, it mimics the actual incursion. Yeah, yeah. So it's all hidden at no. like a, a final treasure room or something like that, I guess. You don't mean? Do you mean the boss, or do you mean? Yeah, like, like the, the boss. Yeah. Like you eventually you kill the boss, and then you get like all of these chests. Or this kind of goes like the um, like people have uh, said this for like leagues or just buffs to bosses where you kill monsters in the map. The more you kill, the better the boss reward loot is, or something along those lines. Um, it could be something like that, but then you'd always have to get you'd always have to make sure you get the boss, or you get nothing. Yeah, be, like, actually, an hour or nothing. Really but point. then also the boss would have to be buffed. Because it's now kind of easy, and the boss itself is easier than the one pack of blue enemies in the temple. That's that's the other thing for me. So that was something that I also felt Breach did great, which was again the risk risk reward thing. Like, what if uh, the boss would be just another way? Like the 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 more the temple prospers, the more powerful the boss is. So you get more yeah. stuff so that the temple, like technically that's kind of it with the map mods. They make the temple boss stronger, but you don't really feel it that much, I feel, unless you are doing like a minus max, but then you just don't kill the boss and then you just By the fine. way, do you think a temple should have less rooms? I mean, in total, it does feel like it is a bit too big. I think they have to have it have that many rooms just so that they can have the RNG chances for other rooms to all be in there at the same time. Um, I mean, that could maybe make each temple feel more unique. So if it was, it may, it, this may be a really bad thing, but if it was theoretically a temple was six rooms, then the rooms in each temple would feel way more random. That may, that may be a bad thing. That may be a good thing. Um, I think it's just now, like, honestly, it's just because it's so available. It's like, you know, it's in the middle of the jungle. Like, you've heard that shit a million times. But next league, you know, when Alva isn't as available, like, let's say she has a 20% spawn rate. Like, that's a lot of maps for somebody who takes, like, five, six minutes to clear a map to really yeah. get a temple. So when you're actually in that shit, you want to be there for a while. So I mm -hmm. feel like it's going to work a lot better in that case. But for now, yeah, I mean, if we were to address the issue immediately, then... Yeah. And I mean, we play a lot, too, so I don't yeah. think other people are nearly at the point where it's like, oh, I, incursions are a bit much, temples a bit much. It's like only really if you play a lot, I feel like you get there. Because initially, I didn't have those thoughts at all, like even for a while. Like all the way to 100, I was doing temples and I was enjoying it. And then eventually it was like, okay, now I'm kind of done. I'm curious, I asked this exact same question in the last Bay class, but I'm curious what you guys think. So my main concern with Incursion, even before the leak started, was people will get bored of the tile set, and that will add to the feeling that it's like, oh, I'm doing the same thing over and over. If there were, like, different temples, even if the end result was exactly the same, but it was just a slightly different aesthetic, do you think you would, like, get a bit more longevity out of it? Yep, definitely. Yeah, I think each right now each room kind of has its own base tile set, right? Cuz yeah. they have their own little design for each each room and it kind of like the I guess the Temple Nexus one, it it has the pyramid center kind of like in the the Adziri um sacrifice area and it kind of keeps getting taller and taller as you upgrade it. So I think if they did that if they're holding the same design pattern, it would have to have similar things where each room when you upgrade it, it has a set tile set that it changes to. So it couldn't be completely random. Um but I wonder, I wonder if that would be like, because they have to have them connect in certain ways. So I don't know how much they can really change the interior of each room aside I mean, from doing like texture stuff, maybe. So or... like, for example, this is like super basic. Instead of it always being in the jungle, because that's another thing, like the bit before you enter the temple feels really meaningless. There's like, yeah, there's it's three always packs the same path, and nothing, yeah. right? So if there were like, just, I don't know, three really basic layouts, 
One was a jungle, one was like an Arctic snow area, one was like a desert. You know, you could even have like an underwater, but let's just say those three real basic. Those are three pre-existing layouts you can just steal to go leading up to the temple. And then yep. once you're inside the temple, you could maybe just have like some tumbleweed or a little bit of sand somewhere on the floor. One's got a little bit of snow somewhere. And you'd actually have to do very little to it. Yeah. And they would, just, yeah. Just adding texture, clutter, things like that. Yeah. Yep. Different design. Yeah. By the way, has anyone got Adziri in the temple? No, I've been trying. Every time I see her goddamn room, I upgrade it. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, this time it's going to be the one. I get it to like tier two and I never get it above that. I How does it, it work? You you think you just have a Ziri in there and she's yeah, whatever yeah, level but, uh, wants. But the fight itself, does she have the faces? Uh, so this is yeah. basically what happens, Wolf you. So you, uh, you have the phases. You then walk towards the door. You realize the door is closed. You panic. <laughs> you uh, drop a portal. <laughs> Then you die, you rip, and then uh, Rise gets second place in the race of hundred. It's basically <laughs> just uh, don't play hardcore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wait a minute, this sounds familiar. Where is he going with this? <laughs> uh, I love that. That was that so good to watch. That was I fucking love that. <laughs> to yeah, be I fair, mean, though, I is... I would have done the exact same thing he did. I would have I Absolutely. wouldn't have assumed it was all the phases. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know why he like went in there and all this stuff that's the worst thing like he did that right and like you gotta take into account so many things but then you've also got the reddit odd comment of like the random fucking dude literally telling the best player like in the game or one of i guess like oh he doesn't know how aziri works what an idiot i could do this better farming aziri forever it's like dude <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> like uh wait do you need to be a certain level uh, you can get it zero the second you get to maps. So once you get to maps, then the Itziri, uh throne room starts appearing. In and the she table. gets buffed by all the map mods. Yeah. Uh, all the mods to the yeah. temple. The yeah. temple mods. And to get her, you have Damn. to get like turbo. She's like forty percent faster and everything. Yeah. You got a nice <laughs> like turboed minus mats max Xeri <laughs> seems good. And does she drop anything special? Yeah, the flask and then the boots. Yeah, but ju yeah. just the normal Azira drops, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think so. Well, I don't actually. I've I've never actually watched someone farm it. I actually. I, 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 I don't know either. Loot. I, does it kind of drop? I've seen people loot? drop the normal stuff, but not uh, not anything uh, particularly special. Just like a turbo Aziri instead of just getting a mid. Like a better Aziri, except you don't get good loot. <laughs> yeah. <Basically. laughs> sounds about right. <laughs> Yeah, but like More a minus like... max, that's pretty much Uber at zero. <laughs> Yikes. And apparently, yeah, apparently it's just normal at zero loot. Yeah, that's really sad. Speaking of normal at zero loot, fucking Doriani's when. I, last league, this league, it's just flask, 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 fucking, ugh. You should ask Nugi about that. Yeah. Nugi's done it like three leagues in a row, and on the first try, he every time dropped the scepter now. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I got the boots. I've never had anything but the flask for the last two leagues. Only flask, <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> Just drop the scepter. I don't know what's the big deal. Yeah. God damn it, dude. People keep asking, like, dude, why are you still using Bright Beak on your build? Why aren't you using like something a little bit better? It's like, go away. <laughs> it's also, can I just Wait, say... Wait, what? There is nothing better than using well, that, Bright Beak. Well, there is nothing better than Bright Beak. It's actually surprisingly difficult to roll an Ignite weapon. I should have actually mentioned this earlier. So yeah, when you try is. and like roll a Scepter, you can't roll spell damage. So the, yep. what you have to do is you need to try and hit fire damage prefix, and then the fire damage suffix, suffix. and then get like burning damage. Yeah. But there's on the only two good prefixes um, are... Mana, if your mind of matter, and fire damage. That is literally it. Wait. Mm -hmm. well, what about flat fire damage to spells? No, because if That'll you do that, you fuck you. E. Yeah. Ah, right. Yeah, it's really difficult. I spent four hundred alts or some shit rolling <laughs> scepters, and I'm just like, I don't know why I'm like, because I'm still just using fucking bright beak anyway. But I wanted to like try and use something different. It's really frustrating. Yeah, are you talking people... about the temple weapons? No, just in general. Yeah, it's just uh, normal, just normal weapons. Just like rolling uh, a normal ignite weapon is ridiculously difficult. Uh, like I put in all tier ones in Path of Building, and I had a Torianis, and it was still 
the same. It, it was only a little bit better, I think. And at that point, you'd be spending exalts to make that weapon, and you wouldn't even have attack or cast speed on it. I was like, yeah. okay, maybe can I, I, I also I just, just say for everyone to like four hundred alts? Or I'm playing SSF, you dumb cunts. It's not like I can just like, oh, let me just transform one exalted orb into a thousand bats. <laughs> it's SSF. You can't just be like, oh, I instantly have all the fusings I want. You kind of have to just accept what you get. So um, yeah, it's kind of like grind three or four days worth of maps you know having to pick up bloody alts you know on your filter and then you sync them all and it's like i'm just gonna use bright beak anyway so like fuck yeah i fucking love it that's yeah. my shit man that's the best part yeah. when steel gets to 100 on a five link that's my favorite shit about ssf man but he he doesn't have a six link he's 100 he's used like 5,000 fusing orbs but then he's got a inspired learning. It's like the <laughs> best. Basically, like what you want to do is like you're rolling a hubris circlet and then rise knows exactly what you press. Get that scour orb. Oh, <laughs> SSF by the way. You. You're really bring, bringing back the May Mays, dude. <laughs> Calm down. Nobody knows about this shit anymore. That was one of my fucking favorites. Is, you're like, this, this is, is a past. good one. I keep this. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, that was a good one for sure. No. Um, but also, this league should be better for crafting. Since uh, you get an exalt and uh, you exchange it for 150 hairs. And just spam your hairs to craft your weapon. Which sure. ve which vendor does that? Uh, uh, <laughs> Pee <-wee> dot trade. <laughs> oh, is that like a vegan daily or something? <laughs> the amount of bots on that shit, it's basically automated. It's like always the same guy you're trading with. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of exalted orbs, have you guys dropped any exalted shards from the chests? No. Nope. I didn't think I thought my I had like I have like a setting for racing on my loot filter that I enabled that hides every fragment because it's supposed to be for racing, which you don't get anyway. And I thought I had that enabled the whole fucking league because I never dropped it. And then I went to trade league and I dropped three out of a single chest. And I'm just like, wait a minute, this can drop exalted orbs, uh, exalted shards. But no, it wasn't there. It just never drops. I don't know. And I've heard what of people mean? dropping a shard, uh, Mirror of Calandra shard, like. Mm -hmm. That seems so unreal to me because that that was like my number one thing to get, the whole freaking league. But yeah, it's a little bit encouraging to hear that you guys haven't dropped an exalted shard either. I've dropped like two. I've dropped like two exalts the entire league, and none of them were from Temple or anything like that. I feel like Alva's eating up exalted orb drops. I've it's dropped probably, like four I think exalted orbs the whole way. The issue. In the flashback, I dropped twenty-seven exalted orbs to one hundred. In this one, I dropped four to one hundred. Alva's <laughs> eating our exalted orb. That bitch really <laughs> likes. Wait, what does she say? Wait, wait, but you do sacrifice. So, so basically, you feed her to give you better loot. We're wait. exchanging. We're exchanging the exalted. <laughs> yeah. It's like where, where she goes. Them. I really love jewelry. It's like <laughs> oh, this bitch really loves jewelry. You know it. It's like goddamn my exalted. I wonder how that's not a conspiracy yet. One thing I did want to ask, and I need to quickly run AFK real quick, and this is going to be mostly for you two. So how bad is this whole, like, whispering thing that people keep telling me there's a real big issue in Trade League right now with the API and you guys getting, like, spam whispered or something? Like, what's that about? I had a I strange bug. Uh, people keep whispering me, trying to buy. I try to reply or I try to invite and it says we are not online. There was some kind of strange bug, and some people in my chat tried to whisper me, and I couldn't whisper them back. Yeah, that's. I think that's a server bug, and that's that's been happening for a couple of leagues, but I think it may be more prominent now because I've had it happen a couple of times as well. Um, but I think other than that, like when we have actual trades, I don't know if it's as bad now, but it's usually always bad in the beginning of the league. There's the API delay, and it may be from PoE trades end or just the API itself, but you'll get whispered for something you sold like an hour or two hours ago. Yeah. And you'll still be getting whispered for it. And so you basically I sell an item DND. and put D&D on. <laughs> and then wait, and then, then open it back up, sell your next item. <laughs> so I've been seeing that a lot too. I don't know if it's as bad now because I haven't sold many things that are like uh, price fixable or, or very um, high demand. So I don't know. It could, could be better now. It seemed better in my experience. I was trying to sell a bunch of stuff yesterday. It seemed a lot better. 
for mm. the most part they fixed it. You guys saw the video where it was showing like how fast the items yeah, are yeah. getting displayed. <laughs> yeah. Damn. And like the PoE trade website was like a minute faster or something than XYZ. Mm -hmm. Really makes you think. I don't know. I did start using. Oh, by the way, there are some advantages of using uh, official trading website. Um, damn it, I can't you never want to trade again. That's the <laughs> after going there once and seeing the UI. You never want to trade again. No, wait. The UI isn't that bad actually. And okay. uh, I they believe have in. In PoE trade, you can see the maximum and minimum rows on the, on the mods. But if you ho hover over your uh, mouse over your mods in the official website, you do see the minimum and maximum values. Mm -hmm. I think they're more accurate too because they give the the straight yeah. up if it's a suffix or prefix too to help you. Because on PoE trade, they just have like question marks if they yeah. don't know if it's a hybrid or a suffix or prefix. You can so change I, layout now. What? I think they have. Like yeah, there are three options. Thing, yeah, you can see two two rows in in one screen as well. What? I've been oh trying to use God. it. I just have to get used to like the actual top search filter UI because there's yeah. so many weird drop downs for it. Mm. Wait, where do you change this? Uh, top right. Top right. Oh wait. Oh my God! <laughs> Wait, when did they? Holy shit! You can show them next to each other. Yeah. This is like they, they just did this last week, I think, or something. It was pretty recent. Yep, pretty cool. What? They changed the overlay on the UI on the PoE Trade website. I don't know if you've seen this, Darky. Or not PoE Trade on the official PoE website. Yeah. You know how the UI was super cancer before? This shit's pretty good now. Wow. Fucking okay. muted, by uh, the way. I, oh, wow. Uh, oh, oh. This, looks, this looks pretty good, but this does look pretty good. <laughs> Damn, I love that. OK, that's an amazing change. <laughs> Give it myself. Sorry, the cat earlier who was trying to attack the green screen decided now is the perfect time to spew cough balls all over the carpet. So. We're having a having a nice time with the cat today, Puck Champ. Um, so one thing that I did want to get your guys' opinions on, since you know you kind of like to play the slightly slightly off meta build. So me and Rise recently has been like, you play SSF, you have a slightly slower progression. Life feels amazing, man. Um, would you guys ever consider SSF as an alternative to doing like the jankier setup to try and get that slower, more fun experience? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I really like solo self found. Um, I always like like in I play old school RuneScape and I do an Iron Man in that and I have a hardcore Iron Man and stuff and I enjoy that kind of play style. But uh, the issue with being like a content creator or making guides and things like that is I won't have access to certain builds. I'll won't have access to do certain guides um, and things like that. So I'm not able to play it as my regular option because of that. And uh, I also play with a couple of friends too, so then I can't play with them. But when like this last flashback, I did a uh, hardcore solo cell found and I played that through uh, like a week or so until I ripped to a, a big bear. <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> and then uh, but then, yeah, after that, I didn't have time to play for another solo cell found character. So pretty much on like the events or short events, I get to do solo cell found. I enjoy it just for like the separate play style it gives and the ability to kind of, you know, play around what you get as drops rather than playing around currency. So good. I feel like people, nobody says that sort of shit <laughs> frequently enough in PO. It's like whenever somebody dies, it's like, Oh my god, trapped in this while I was behind the door and then the thing walked in and it was super scary. There was like a million mobs and they're shooting at me. It's like, no, I got hit by a big bear. I shouldn't yep. have done that. I, I, I stood right in front. I was like, this will probably kill me. And then it, it did. It swiped me and I died. That reminds me, speaking of old memes, of Tarki's... Uh... Was it Beast Cherry Rip with the where you were in the porches and you were like, I'm gonna capture this sucker, and then he just like <laughs> and Tarkis yeah, falls yeah. over. It's like, uh, I'm surprised he even lived that long. That yeah, like one. so just before that clip happened, I said this is probably gonna kill me. So I was just I was doing poor joys and like 
insert crit champion build here, SSF, by the way. Uh, I, I had, like, fuck... It was like, Rise, you know you play those builds, they're like, they're only 5k life, you're like, wow, how are you doing so well mapping with only 5k life? You actually, like, you have, like, flasks, and you press the flasks, and then you don't really yeah. take any damage. Sure. Um, and it was going fine, I'd done everything on it, and, uh... Yeah, there's just this big. I think it was one of the bird spitters, and I'm like, ooh, it was a big bird, yeah, big bird and poor joys. This might be a bit. <laughs> this might be a bit spoopy. And I managed to face tank it for a few seconds because you know, stib my op, and then it just connected that one auto attack, and there's like, nope, <laughs> dead. Okay, never mind. The best part was, in my opinion, your your thought process. Taki's thought process was like, I don't want it to capture it. Because then it's gonna inherit all the mods. Yeah. But then he's yeah, like, that was it was even it. better. That was even better. I was like, I said I probably shouldn't capture this because if I capture it, you know, I'm gonna have to fight a red poor joy beast in the arena. That's gonna be so scary. So I better fight the red poor joy beast in the poor joys instead. Uh <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. That's the beauty of it. How anticlimactic things like this can be. I really love it. No, it's it's good. Like, I, I don't know, you probably feel this uh, well a little bit, it's just... SSF has been such a godsend for me, because it just, it extends the league cycle of PV so much, like, it really helps dealing with, like, burnout and stuff, and I would worry that if I went back to Trade League at this point, I would really struggle when it comes to streaming PV in that, you know, that last month. That last, like, mm -hmm. oof. I really don't have that. The game's evolving so fast. Mm. I've never really had that. Yeah, every now and then I'll have to take a break, but generally. But I mean, I do. Well, people think I primarily play SSF, but that's not really true. Yeah, you I really of, you only ever halfway, play. Don't you? Yeah. I, like, not even. Like, this league, I just got my 100 and then I went, well, I didn't find literally anything. So, what's the fun in this? And then I went to Trade League. So, it was like two weeks in after the, after the race. How many builds do you usually do per league? Uh, two. <laughs> Taki keeps trying what? to do it, but then he keeps dying at like level forty. So Fuck you. Really uh, okay, so 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 far this league, uh, I did Blade Vortex Elementalist till ninety. Then I had a Tinkerskin drop, so I was like, oh, I'll play a trapper. And then chat was like, dude, fuck off with the traps. We've seen this. So I then <laughs> I went from that to playing a Taki wants to be Waggle. I did an Occultist build to ninety two. CI is fucking amazing. I don't know how I ripped that character. I do not know what the fuck I did. Okay. I had Incandescent Heart, 8.5k ES, Temp Chains and Feeble, all of, like, the curse effectiveness. I was doing a Colonnade off stream. I shield charged into a pack of white mobs. And they just, you know when you, like, you have the five big skellies and they just all swing at the exact same time? And I just went, like, in, dead. And I was like... Mm. <laughs> Those are an SSF? Yeah. Those are some pretty good stats, man. Damn. Yeah, it's it's people keep saying like CI is so bad, CI is so expensive. It's really easy getting like budget as fuck. Uh CI get I did CI last league as well. Especially if you do a cultist, you can like regularly hit like 9k energy shield without even trying. You know, Sintrek is such a common item. You get like a 160 Sintrek, you then throw armor scraps on that, done. Um, you know, I was using that incandescent hearts and he's got like 300 energy shield or something. And then I was using like a 200 energy shield shield, 200 energy shield hubris and a 100 energy shield gloves because I had in them insanity crafted for the more, um, attack and car suit. And yeah, the character was like face rolling. You just don't do, you know, white colonnade mobs apparently. And, and you're a-okay. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> That's why I like... <laughs> People always give me shit for this, but I love armor for exactly that reason. <laughs> it's like when you're just mapping, doing a regular map with like maybe one damage mod, and then like a Roa charges you, like a white Roa charges you for like 4,000 life, you're like, oh, wait a minute. This can happen any at like any time. And that I feel like combats that really well. But then every now and then I'll just jump into a pack and I'll like miss one click of a flask or something and then i just get hit and i drop to like two percent i'm just like ah, okay <laughs> maybe it's better to make like characters not so dependent on potions but then i still do it actually that's one point i'd be really interested to hear your what's your guys like ideal flask setup because this changes a lot from like person to person so for me personally it's like quicksilver of adrenaline fair 
So I have to use a Stib Knight on every build, which doesn't get blind somehow else. I prefer running Granites over Basalts, and it triggers the fuck out of chat for exactly what, like, Rai said. It has, like, better uptime during maps. It's generally mm -hmm. better against the shitty white mobs. Um, and then it's, like, in its Zeri's Promise, one life pot. That's like the like the bulk standard setup. Maybe a jade flask or something instead of the Azeris. I don't know. What's yours, Wolfie? Uh, I know you're not, not gonna like it, but I usually run three life flasks. <laughs> I <laughs> hate flasks. Right there. <laughs> Why three? Because two may not be enough. <laughs> I usually just jam the flasks. <laughs> I, okay, can I just say I fucking love you for that because like the amount of times you have to argue with someone for two and you're like, well, maybe if you boss a lot on like a certain setup, maybe two's okay. So give you some room. You're like three. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't don't like relying on flasks. If I could, I would remove all utility flasks. Just keep uh, life flasks and uh, mana oh, flasks buddy. and go. Yeah, okay, so with your two remaining flask slots, what's your setup for those two? Uh, Quicksilver and uh, either, either Basalt, Granite, or Azir's Promise. Well, usually Azir's Promise because uh, he has damage, in this league at least. So if you're using... I'm surprised that you could get away with that. So if you're using like three life flasks, how are you dealing with like status removal or curse removal or anything like that? Uh, Bleed removal on the first flask, usually life. Then uh, freeze removal on the second, and uh, that's all. <laughs> Wait, you don't run like cast removal? Holy shit. Nah. Wait, you don't run cast Wait, removal? Wait, what? Nah. Do you roll in the cast maps? No, too what? much trouble. <laughs> what? No, fuck off. You are genuinely fucking with me. No, he's fucking with us. There's no way. <laughs> No, I'm too lazy to roll flasks. <laughs> That's like saying I'm too lazy to roll a character because you're never gonna get past the fucking. Well, I'm never playing. Get to maps. <laughs> I'm playing softcore, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. God damn it, dude. Okay, it's so... funny too, in perspective, because yesterday I was watching Destiny and he's like a newer player and he's doing really well because he's like level eighty or something. On his first character and he's playing on hardcore and he was like really considering his potions and he was using two life flasks because he was like i feel like two life flasks are too much and i should probably switch to one because i can never put myself in a situation where i use like both of them and then i don't get out of combat and stuff like that <laughs> this, this guy's like three life flasks i'm just like mm, that's a very fine observation <laughs> destiny <laughs> I don't know how you even stream like that. That's the that's the worst part for me. I I have like flasks that last eight seconds and I'll still manage to like get twenty bleeds on me and while reading chat just melt away and I do that like consistently a couple times a league. I don't know how you can play with just clicking a bleed removal flask. Okay, so correction. Last. I have three life flasks, but I only use two because I usually <laughs> don't reach the fifth flask anyway. <laughs> So yeah, so just two. Oh, that's why you don't rewarding because <laughs> the last one never gets clicked. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> right, try and top that one, EE. -E. <laughs> Unfortunately, mine's a bit more traditional, so I end up using like one life flop, life pot, and then it depends if the build's crit or not. If it's crit, it has to have a diamond flask in it, um, and then otherwise, I generally pop in at least one unique flask. Uh, every build usually has one unique class, whether it's at series, Lions, Roar, um, Wise Oak. And then after that, it's a defensive flask, like a usually a Stib Knight for melee builds. Uh, Granite is also another one I like using. I, but the only time I use Basalts is if I'm doing like lab farming, because the hits are so big that it's generally better than a Granite, unless you get Granite of Iron Skin, you have a bunch of modifiers. Um, and then after that, I use the, another utility flask. It either fills in something that it's missing. Most of the time now, you get Onslaught. Uh, from other items and things like that, so I never use silvers. But like sulfurs aren't bad for extra regen and damage, and then you got another jade if you want, or quicksilver or something like that. So mm. boring, but it's like the same setup I use on most of my builds. I feel like the flask setup oftentimes dictates what people actually end up playing, mm. and like they hate to admit it. Like in my case, I'm, when I'm on the right side of the skill tree, my flask setup is pretty basic for like a 
queen of the forest or just high evasion whatever build and then you use the uh is it alchemist or chemist i never remember the one that gives you less duration but effectiveness it's, that's alchemist, alchemist. Yeah. Yeah. yeah alchemist uh quicksilver of adrenaline and all that sort of stuff but if um and that's on the right side if i'm on the left side I I always got to get that granite of iron skin. That's my shit, man. Can I propose a challenge to make a build without any utility flasks? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, oh, the, every build, they have to use at least three aquamarine flasks. <laughs> Isn't that, like, decent for bossing or something? Uh, Dan's always, like, memeing about it. I don't know if he's, like, winding me up or something. It used to be, de wasn't it 30% before? Now it's only 10%, so it's not as good. I forget what the numbers are on it. I never look at it, so... I remember that was a thing at some point. Yeah, you just make it a soul first build. I guess that's okay then. It's 20% yeah. chance to avoid cold damage on hit and it creates chilled ground. And I think chilled ground is like... I think it's, it's like guaranteed. They reworked that with a shocked ground, right? It's guaranteed, yeah. but it's like a really low I think it's. I think it rises right. I think it's 10% guaranteed, 10%. yeah. It needs to be 30, yeah. But, um... No, I definitely agree with you a lot, Rise. Like... The reason why I often play like Ellie Overload builds over crit builds is I just don't like running a diamond flask. It feels really bad having a flask which like doesn't scale with flask effects. I don't know. That's like the opposite yeah. of me. Yeah. The diamond flask is like the one redeeming thing that I makes me want to play crit builds <laughs> somehow. It's such a nice flask. Like obviously I'll always if I'm playing crit build I'll always run a diamond flask. I just I love Stib Knights too much. For me, I hate running a build which doesn't have a Stib Knight flask of warding. Sorry, Wolfie. But it's just like, I want to have that on a Stib Knight because Stib Knight has the best uptime. Like, I just have to have that there. Then I always have my Bleeding Flask on my life removal. Um, and then Freeze. I, that's the, I can't have Freeze on like a life flask. I have to have Freeze on a utility flask because for whatever reason... I like so I have the opposite thing that most streamers have. Most streamers like they read chat and they don't realize they're bleeding. Whereas I like I'll read chat and I won't realize I'm frozen. So like, I have to have freeze removal because otherwise it's like well, why can't I control my character? Because so much of like the way I play PUE is autopilot because you just muscle memory everything. So yeah. like you have to have that freeze removal so which is always active so you don't accidentally get like scuffed on it. Um, for me, I've been delving into, uh, speaking of stealing uh, Steel's build, I've been delving into the whole uh, Brian King Pantheon upgrades and just mm -hmm. not having a freeze removal instead of having like a character with just like 6, 7k life and then uh, using freeze removal on just my life flask. Man, you never fucking get frozen. Like, Is it good? It's really good. It's like you gotta just use it to open boxes, really, but like... I never ever get frozen. If I've got like 7k life, no matter map mod, whatever, whew, it's such a nice setup because, yeah, it opens up like a utility flask that you can now use adrenaline on and like absolutely justify it without feeling like an idiot when you die. And it's like, it's just so nice, especially for since indoor map meta is so punishing for a lot of builds. So that if you've got adrenaline, and especially if you've got alchemist adrenaline, you can clear like an armory so much faster with a shield charge character. Otherwise, it just feels like absolute cancer. I highly recommend people check it out. What is right. adrenaline? Adrenaline the... flask? It's the movement speed. The extra oh. movement speed. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> if you, uh, if on, you transmute <laughs> your Quicksilvers uh, and then you, you use some augments and some alterations, if you uh. ever have the time to roll your fifth flask, um, <laughs> I can highly recommend it. It's pretty good. <laughs> It's, it's pretty flask good. usage. I honestly cannot remember flask mods mod names. Mm -hmm. See, I'm really curious now how many of your builds that you've benched you would have kept playing if you were running four utility flasks. I did try that once. And people hated that build. What build was it? Uh I was using here we go. Cyan <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it was a good build. Um, <clears throat> Cyclone, cast on crit. Uh, no, wait. It was cast on melee kill, I think. It was a, it was a With uh, Nagama's flame day. axe. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, None of these are good builds, by the way. Cast on crit, uh, magma orbs. 
and with, with my gamma stream. <laughs> so yeah, it was good build. <laughs> it was honestly one of the that. fastest build I did. <laughs> The one thing I really loved about that is, and I, I know that this isn't how the internet works, but in my mind, me and Rise locked eyes for that entire <laughs> description, and you could just both watch each other's faces twitching, and then it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It was good build, uh, Glacial <laughs> Hammer, and the cast on grid, cast while channeling, charge dash, single target. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was cast on melee kill, yeah. I remember struggling against bosses. <laughs> but for mapping, it was amazing. I can imagine that. Yeah, yeah. Tucky's, Tucky's now... Wait, are you muted? I, I, I'm muted okay. for you guys. I use push to talk for you guys. <laughs> okay. uh, they, they could hear my giggles. Thank you, but yeah. <laughs> Let's pray oh, for the God. best. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So before we finish up today, and before I have like a hernia from stifled laughter, <laughs> what is everyone's super secret spicy build that they've got planned for later on this league that they eventually want to get around to? I've already played my super secret spicy build. Quinn really got me inspired to delve back into the earthquake bleed dual wield memes. I made it to level 30, <laughs> 6. At which point I went, I fucking hurt Earth, hate Earthquake now, and then mm -hmm. I've dumpstered it. So it was super secret. It's so secret, not even I know like what it does. But maybe at some point. I don't know. Well, what did you hate about Earthquake out of interest? Earthquake isn't bad. And once you get enough AoE, it feels pretty good. It's just like... I think I've played it enough to the point where it just now feels that I, if I'm going to be playing a dot build, which technically is what Earthquake is in a way, especially if I'm bleed, it's like I might as well just play Ignite. So I'll probably get back into it at some point. But yeah. Also, it triggers the fuck out of me that I've got Vol Earthquake, but unless I build a Vol Earthquake build, it has absolutely zero synergy with earthquake as a skill mm -hmm. and that itself just gets in my head so fucking much that i just can't do it i just can't do it man it's like Isn't it should be its own ability. Better than earthquake? i'm not sure i really i really have no idea the reason why you would play bleeds in the past was because earthquake was the only uh skill in the game that could get the duration tag and therefore you could use like uh uh, Swift Affliction with it and stuff like that, but uh, now okay. every skill gets that, so you don't really care for scaling bleeds with something like that. But somehow this has just stuck because it's just got such a large AoE, so you can just jump in the middle of the pack, blow it up, and move to the next pack because it's actually got like decent yeah. AoE. But yeah, then these other things just. But it it is also clunky because it has that delay. Yeah, but the delay the delay really doesn't feel bad anymore. Honestly, but like even Grand when Slam, I just barely equipped it, it was it was pretty all right. But the Grand Slam, you have no delay, and basically you yeah. have almost the same AOE, even even full circle, almost full full circle. Yeah, but you gotta sacrifice two threshold jewels for that, man. Come on, that's not <laughs> remove <fun>. the delay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. All right, go on, Wolfie. What's your super secret spice? Um. I have a couple of them. So I really want to do... <laughs> Don't laugh, I haven't said anything. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just, <laughs> I said a really funny joke earlier. And it's just, no, go on, go on. <laughs> so I really want to try Dark Pact Poison Trapper. Dark Pact Poison Trapper. Yeah. I feel like that could kill bosses really nice. That would be like a nice boss killer. Set up like 30 yeah. of them and it just pops and you've got 30. Yeah, since uh, traps have no cooldown now, so you can apply a lot of poison stacks. Mm. And uh, AoE is pretty decent. But it's it could still be clank, I guess. Now I'm going to ask, it. do you have a f an Ascendancy in mind? Uh, Trickster. Trickster? Okay. I uh, actually tried a couple. Occultist and Trickster. Why not Assassin if you're getting poison? Why Doesn't, it have, the, doesn't have the U-tag on it? Scale, 
No, no, skill, not no, just the assassin, like, four point is, like, broken for poison. I would just take that shit and opportunistic for the movement speed. It's like 30%. It's not that crazy. I mean, there's the. Yeah, but, but the you don't get any like leech. AP? Wait, from assassin, you don't get any leech and uh, nothing good. But, uh, Trickster Wait, how does... do you leech with a trapper? Well, I mean, you don't leech, but, um, region and stuff, sustainable build. But with Trickster, you do get because. On kill works with uh, poison. If poison kill enemies, then you get on kill effects and you recover 2% of your maximum life, yes, and 4% uh, of your mana. I mean, if you slap an impulsa on top of that, I think it'll be great. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> cheating. <laughs> that is cheating. That's what I had. That's, that was my problem. I had the Ignite Lightning Trapper, and it was like, Sick as fuck, exactly because of the fact that if you degenerate, even if the source of the damage is your trap, it still counts as your kill. So it was just like, yeah. well, this build's really cool, and I've got massive ignites with this lightning trap and everything, and that feels really nice, but I really don't want to use an Impulsa. I equipped an oh, Impulsa one time. One... I quit the character immediately. It was just like, yeah. One more thing. And for bosses, you can use Val Summon Skeletons. So then you throw the trap, and you blow up basically all the screen. Because Actually, it will target skeletons. Cool. But does it? Um, what would you use for the trap triggers? Just AOE or sunblast or how would you be triggering your traps? What do you mean triggering traps? Yeah, sunblast. Yeah, you would use sunblast and then two yeah. cheap constructs. Yeah. Okay. I haven't planned my um, jewels. Well, if you're gonna use a sunblast, then might yeah. as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm, that does that takes yeah. does that take the HP of the trap or HP of the character? Uh, HP of the of the traps, which means one life, yeah. which isn't that bad. <laughs> Maybe. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can't get any lower. So yeah. Why not bladefall? Uh, because it's boring. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Can't can't <laughs> argue with that logic. That's, that's... <laughs> I mean, also, I, apparently Bladefall's slightly less laggy now, but Bladefall is, like, notoriously laggy as well. So it's a lot of screen clutter, kind of like Firestorm and stuff like that. I mean, if you watch the video I made with the Poet's Pens in Bladefall, it, you don't you don't see the screen, your computer goes to yeah. 10 FPS. I couldn't watch it. <laughs> Alright, go on, EE. I couldn't what, watch it. What, what's enough your secret, secret <laughs> setup? <laughs> Uh, I don't really have, like, so I end up planning my builds sort of right before I end up doing them based on either what I have for currency items or ideas. But the current one that I'm planning now is, I guess, sort of a meme but it's not crazy meme because it's using Elemental Hit, but I'm planning on using uh, Elemental Hit uh, range attack totems on Hierophant using Elemental Overload and Point Blank. But since we got new uh, new corruptions, uh, we got Point Blank on Quivers, I'm putting it on a Skirmish, so I'll have five totems don't have to go all the way to point blank and get some other nodes in the tree. And then um, won't have to worry about accuracy with Ephagon and maybe some Abyss blind jewels. So, I don't know. Could be good. It, it's Wait, what, what ascendancy really good is this? Build. Hierophant, so I get five, five totems. I, right I now, know someone who's playing that. Do... He said it's really strong. Yeah. Dead Eye is the way to go. I... I can't remember what his sentence he was, and I'm gonna butcher his name now, and everyone's gonna call me a noob. The really like famous Heimerdinger lol streamer who plays PvE, like Heimerdinger NA, I think his name is. He said Heisen he was. Dong. He said he was playing that build, and he was really enjoying it. I can't remember what his sentence he was, but he said it was like, yeah, really, I, really good. Yeah, I have a plus three tabula for Ellie hit, and then a uh, that that um, chin soul and point blank and everything. So it's basically gonna be up hit, up front hit damage. Um, I think right now. With like gear that I can afford, it would be like seven hundred thousand DPS a totem, paper damage. Can I quickly Damn. ask how much is plus free tabula? I bought one yesterday for like four X, but I bought the one that I have on my fireball right now. I bought for like two because it's projectiles, huh. but I couldn't use that one, so I had to get an AOE one. So I bought one for like four. Oh. So I'm gonna resell the one that I have after I make the build. Don't tell anybody. Nice. <laughs> I love I love Heisendong because I can always talk him into anything. Like you, Tarki, maybe remember a long time ago. I was like, cast when channeling, charge dash, cremation build, yes, yes. so that it would it would drop like a corpse, would desecrate through that, and then I would use the cremation and kill things that way. 
and he was playing something similar and i absolutely just talked him into it and he was immediately he was like wait a minute that sounds really really good and then he for like 30 minutes was setting up his character then he and I, it was like a, the massive build up for me because i knew it was coming and then he finally managed to do it and then he went to the map, a map and he's just like yo this is absolute dog shit and i'm just like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i was in chat when you were doing that i felt really bad so i'd been playing a cremation character and he came to me and was like, oh, this this character seems kind of cool. Maybe in like a non-SSF environment, maybe you could do something really like spicy with him. I'm like, yeah, dude, fucking go for it, man. And I'm like, I'll finally check out his stream and see what's happening. I'm so lurking. And I just see a rise like, you tried to do a Carswood and Shadowing Charge <laughs> And like the whole thing, I'm just sitting there like this. Like, <laughs> I fucking love that guy. That's, that's honestly the best. <sighs> But, uh, dude, I've, uh, I've had this one super spicy build planned for three leagues now. But SSF, by the way, I've never been able to gather all of the items required. And, uh, I think you're going to be pretty amazed by, by how unique this is. Okay, so you get two Drink poets. Arrow. Oh, go on. Drink arrow. No, you get, yeah, no, you get two poets pens. I know, very, very, very underrated item. You get an impulsor, by the way. You go elementalist, what? right? Shh, 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 shh. You put arc in one of them, and you put lightning warp in the other. Now, <laughs> now it doesn't sound unique, but when they first made poets pens, there's the Daradar dude, who's the guy who actually makes the Blink Mary build. He was the fastest when I saw do it once on the front. I was like, dude, that looks so cool. Every league they've buffed that fucking build, and I can guarantee. By the time I get my second Poets Pen and SSF, they're gonna like kill it. They're gonna be like, no, dead, must destroy. And I'm like refusing to go into Trade League. But it just seems like impossible for me to get both the Poets Pens and the Impulses. I just get like one or the other. And it's just like, mm. that was Those were the only things that I had this league that I had drop. Two Poets Pens and an Impulse. I literally did not drop any other unique item other than like seven Belly of the Beasts. And imagine how happy I was when I went to Trade League and realized that they're 10k hots. I'm just like, oh, oh fuck, dude. How do I make money in this game? Yeah. I, it's it's really weird the way that like SSF sort of like throws you the curveballs. And that's the thing that I love about it. So, because I've tried to convince a lot of my friends and a lot of my viewers to play it. And they're like, oh, but like, you don't, you never get any choices with build making. I feel like with how like. Pee is right now and it's like oh you just play kb or you just play sunder having those super limited options they like they force you into interesting build choices um yeah. and also it means that i just use you know arms heritage on every build because that shield is the best fucking item ever made i love that shit so good um yeah. i used it for my rf character this league it was pretty nice have you seen that you can get like really insane corrupts on it like yes. plus two to auras yeah, plus I've... two like duration and stuff you can really get some nice shit i think it's even plus one levels they're they're really common as well so i've been trying to apparently there's like fizz taken as ellie and i've already got like a really spicy fizz taken as ellie helm and i'm trying to mm. corrupt them and i've hit uh the plus two to um aura gems on it which is great just not for my current build because might have a matter by the way and I haven't got an essence where I'm not. Right, Darky, this yeah. isn't this isn't your normal stream, all right? We're doing a podcast. Enough oh, sorry, sorry, by the way, sorry, sorry. Come so, on, man. Uh, sorry, back on topic. <laughs> I'm not talking about Arn's heritage. So. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> really appreciate you guys. Uh, Wolfio, Engineering Eternity, I personally want to say I really appreciate the amount of work and inspiring and interesting shit you guys do for the community. Uh, so that's just something for me. And maybe if you guys want to plug something, Wolfio, you got anything, uh, any final thoughts? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, they killed another build. Know? By the way, did you know that you can no longer link, I mean, uh, use the Blink Arrow Mirror Arrow Trapper? So that's another build uh, that was killed. So oh. I feel like this league is just GG is trying to kill all the good, I mean, all the meme builds. Okay, but where can we find you? <laughs> uh, so I stream every, every day, uh, Europe time, and I make uh, like two, three videos a week on YouTube. Just Google. Wolfio. Google you, Wolfio, guess. Yes. Engineering. Google. 
Uh, yeah, I, I try and stream uh, weekdays on my channel. It's just Engineering Eternity on Twitch. And uh, I usually stream Eastern Time from 4 p.m. to 9 or 10 p.m. during the week. And then I spend my weekends making a lovely video guides for you guys. And you can find those over on my YouTube at Engineering Eternity, same as my handle here. <clears throat> and I try and make those every one or two weeks, but I work a full-time engineering job, so I generally don't have that much time outside of all the other stuff that I do. So if you guys want to see nice videos, I guess you can check those out. I would say top guides right there. And Rise, where can we find you? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just fucking say... Jump Wolfie? in, Taki, come yeah, on! Uh, dude, I'm talking, bitch! You're ruining my fucking vibe, man. Can I just Give say, I, I fucking love Wolfio for how he's like, no, Taki, shut up, we're gonna have a professional ending for once. And you started talking about blink arrow traps. That was fucking beautiful. I loved that. Um, but yeah, you can find me at uh, twitch.tv uh, Zizzeron. Uh, I usually stream anywhere between 16 to 20 hours a day, but recently I've been having problems with my sleep. I keep sleeping through my alarms, so uh, I haven't been as consistent with my streams now. Uh, Nugian, where can we find you? Uh, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.